eliminate Baltimore in the first round. If they do it tonight, they have a fighting chance to get to game three. But it wasn't character Marinero who were the keys in Cleveland's win last night. Guy named Kumba, Nassim Alabi, part of the Cleveland Crunch uh, second line, a big factor last night with five points. Now, Nassim Alabi gets overshadowed by Hector and the Z-Man, but during the regular season, he had 114 points. What that means is Harrisburg, if they can shut down Hector, shut down Zorn, then you have to look for Nassim Alabi, Mark Thomas to jump up into the scoring. And they proved it last night in Central Pennsylvania. They can do just that. Stay tuned. The starting lineups and the kickoff are coming up next. When stress takes its toll, wouldn't it be great to have your very own personal... At the Cleveland State Convocation Center, here are the starting lineups for tonight's game. First for the home team, the Cleveland Crunch. Otto Warp, the winningest goalkeeper in the league, anchors a defense with George Fernandez and Tim Tima, Tommy Tanner, Zoran Karic, and Hector Marinero up front. Look for George Fernandez to be all over Franklin McIntosh to get tonight for the Harrisburg Heat. Did a tremendous job last time. In fact, McIntosh is a bit banged up. Harrisburg's lineup in goal, Joe Malia, Scott Henderson, Richard Chinapu on defense. Up front, Franklin McIntosh, Lee Chantret, and Bill Bencher. It'll be interesting to see how long McIntosh goes tonight. He did not go out for the warm-up, still nursing an ankle injury. Uh, you look at him there, he uh, still has a sweatsuit on, so maybe he will not even get into the starting flow of things. And that certainly will affect the Harrisburg D tonight because, of course, he is their leading scorer. One, one might argue the heart and soul of the Harrisburg D. But again, this Heat club of head coach Jim Polly, and it's a seven club. You can never count them out. And the reason why, when they have to play tight defense, they play it. That's how they got to the first round. Last night was a one-point game, so I still say no matter who's out there tonight, it's anything goes. Tonight's officials, Terry Campbell and Frank Fine on the field, with Blas Basorda, the assistant referee, watching from inside the referee's box. Again, a key for tonight's game, David. You mentioned Franklin McIntosh is the easy one to spot out from Harrisburg. But Gary Henley, the Cleveland coach, is looking at a banged-up Harrisburg defense. Does that affect his strategy? Well, I'll tell you what Gary told me before the game. He expects Harrisburg to come out really hard, really strong, as they did last night. So he wants his team to respond in time. And I think, really, he wants to get out of here with a victory tonight because he knows if uh, some of these dreams Harrisburg has, has a couple of days to heal, then the Wednesday game, which will be the game three if needed, could be a whole different ballgame. Harrisburg in white with the black shorts. Cleveland in the red with the yellow numbers. Lee to Chantret stands over the ball facing us. Next to him, Bill Betcher. It's back to Richard Chinapu. And again, Betcher playing with the cast. Uh, you'll note that Franklin McIntosh is not part of the Harrisburg starting lineup, so we'll have to see when he comes in the game. Again, bothered by an ankle injury, suffered last night in Harrisburg. Betcher dumps into the corner. And there's George Fernandez, the Cleveland captain. Well, already you see what exactly Gary Henley of Cleveland expected. Harrisburg to come out hard. They get the kickoff. They press it upfield. None of this fooling around at midfield stuff. Get it into Cleveland's defensive third, and now they have a kick in. Richard Chinapu will bounce the ball like left to have, left. in for the restart. Harrisburg ball in the Cleveland third. Fetcher. Goes to the far side. Henderson's shot hit the glass. Lead to Chantret, number 13. Works the ball back to midfield. Chinapu, who's playing a defensive role, but David, you've seen him many times. He can score. Well, he's a very talented scorer. One time had the hardest shot in all of indoor soccer, so he'll play the defensive role because of his experience. 
John Abe fighting for Harrisburg in the corner. Fernandez wins for Cleveland. Long ball. Deflected back at midfield. The white shirt at Harrisburg. Heat controls. They trail in this best of three series. One game to none. Doug Miller to Danny Kelly. Kelly with the ball now at the Cleveland yellow line. Kelly shot. He's knocked out in front by Ord. Already Harrisburg has the first two shots of the game, and that's exactly what Jim Pollyan was hoping for. Keep the pressure on, keep ball possession. And there you just saw a good example of that uh, tough defense on the part of Harrisburg. It's hard to counterattack against a Harrisburg defense because these guys get back. Angelo Panzetta for Harrisburg. Medved will win the ball for Cleveland at midfield. Medved. The ball knocked away. Fernandez is right there to play it into his goalkeeper. And Otto Orff is an integral part of the Cleveland offense. Again, he'll launch it upfield, and he's got that great arm. And when you got Hector and Zorn up top, or even Seaman and Mark Thomas, you can do a lot of things when you have a goalkeeper like Otto Orff because he really is the counterattack. Mark Thomas gets the ball away, but he did it by fouling, so give it back to Harrisburg. Bob Lilly will set it down. And wants to go to Tachan Trent. Sean Medved for Cleveland. Did Chinapu get in his way? Yeah. Give it back to Cleveland at midfield. Late to Chan Trent, they call him, I hope affectionately. Beetlejuice. I'll tell you what, he is a player that just is, it's like many of the players on this Harrisburg club, but especially to Chantrett, he's got that knee brace on the right leg. He doesn't feel the pain. He's going to go the full 60 tonight, and he'll be climbing Dasher boards the whole bit. He's a type of player that harasses opposing players, and he, and he really could be a factor for the Harrisburg Heat. Walt well, Slothauer attacks against to Chantrett. Harrisburg gets a lot of white shirts around the ball. You have it on offense. Glenn Carbonera now defensively. Mark Thomas dishes off. Slot hour shot. Kick save by Malia. Jenna Poo trying to get the ball through. Intercepted. Thomas turns and hit the glass. Lilly can't clear it out. Now the ball goes to midfield. We're going to see this. It'll be Schlotthauer getting the shot off. Malia with a tremendous foot save. And Joe Malia coming back in for the playoffs with Brett Phillips out with an ankle injury. And Malia started the season as the number one goalkeeper. He's showing why he probably will have a good shot of being the number one goalkeeper next season. And certainly is the guy to go to for Harrisburg during the playoffs. Carriage as always to Marinara. Wide. Can Harrisburg get a two-on-one counterattack? Miller leads the way. His shot is in. And the visitors go in front by two. And it's a special salute to the crowd here in Cleveland. <laughs> That's a Pennsylvania Dutch salute, I guess. But Doug Miller, a big part of the Harrisburg offense, runs upfield. He had to finish this shot because Harrisburg tonight has got to take advantage of the opportunities. And look at Miller. He's watching everything. He sees the opportunity. He's got Otto Orff standing up there. Otto Orff, the proverbial sitting duck. And Doug Miller wanted to mention his name because he's a big uh, part of the reason why Harrisburg has gotten this far. He was a real thorn in Baltimore's side in the first series. He's a second-year player out of Loyola College in Baltimore, and Miller's doing a terrific job, and he's got that speed. If he gets the ball loose at midfield, he's gone. Tim Bartro for Cleveland. Ball knocked away, and again, barely. In the value of the Harrisburg goalkeeper. Looks for Danny Kelly, Pennsylvania College player from Penn State. But Otto Warp wants everyone to go downfield. He'll throw it as far as he can. Not this time. Or for a step in the midfield here and try something new because Cleveland has had some trouble getting that upfield. They've got that good shot by Schlotthauer, but other than that, Harrisburg has controlled the game and they lead 2 nothing. He's looking for Marinero. Can't find him. John Abe. Uh-oh, there's Hector. Shot saved by Malia. And not only was Malia in the box, but three other Harrisburg defenders. Just good, sound defense. Kelly plays it into the Cleveland bench that stops the Harrisburg number advantage. Give it back to Cleveland at midfield. Harrisburg in front two to nothing. They were way in front last night at home and all of a sudden in the third quarter, Cleveland just erased it in the blink of an eye. Well, this is what Gary Henley knows all about. He knows that's the type of team Harrisburg is. If you pardon the pun from another team in the NPSL, they can ambush you, the Harrisburg Heat. They come out strong. They got two things going for them, speed and defense. You play that tough defense. You get the ball loose at midfield. Then you use the speed. You come in waves. You get numbers up like we just saw with Doug Miller, and you get ahead. Carriage's shot is blocked. Cleveland will set up again. I tell you, we've talked about Harrisburg's injuries, but Cleveland has to realize this series is not over. It's not theirs for the taking yet. Marinero. They 
takes one, and he's close twice. Hector Marinero in a game you saw here on Sports Channel America. Just broke every record in the book when he rolled up 100 goals on the season, eight in the game, an individual record, 17 points in the game, an individual record. Well, plain and simple, he's a great finisher. He's a guy that I don't want the goalkeeper, whether he throws it or kicks it downfield. That's his number one target, Hector Marinero. But Henderson controls for Harrisburg and back into Malian. Of course, with numbers like that, Hector Marinero was the league's most valuable player this season. Orf will come out of his goal. The ball's loose to Chantrette's header. will sail into the crowd. I'll tell you what, right now, it's early days in this game, only about four minutes in. But so far, Harrisburg, you know, looks a sharper team. I mean, Otto Orf got caught out a little bit. Credit to Jim Pollahan. And this team, at one point this year, had an eight-game losing streak. He held the club together. Look at this. They're down one game done. They're smiling, still laughing, and still playing soccer. And I, I think Pollahan, very confident before the game, he knows that if his team plays that sound defense, they have a shot. The player in the white shirt in front of Pollahan is goalkeeper Brett Phillips. They're so decimated by injuries, he has a field player's shirt on. But he has an ankle injury. <laughs> They're hurting. Medved just missed. And Harrisburg clears. It's a shame. Medved, a good move to get open. Again, the game is all about creating space for yourself. Medved did that, but couldn't finish the shot. A lobby keeps it alive, and Harrisburg will dump back to midfield again to Chantret. You look at Brett Phillips, a rookie of the year in the MPSL, out of Old Dominion University, great goalkeeper, promising a future he has indoors. It should be noted, Joel Malia, the starting goalkeeper for Harrisburg, is also from Old Dominion University. These guys were roommates in college. Now they're competing for the top spot on the Harrisburg Heat. Big John Crow, number 12 in the white, was the player who dumped it into the corner. Orff sends it the other way for a lobby. You see him a lobby against Penzetta. And Cleveland will set the offense. Fernandez for Carriage. There's the turn from Zoran Carriage in front for a lobby kick for him. Good defense by Angelo Panzetta. You get to see a lot of white shirts in the box getting back on defense. Nobody's cheating at midfield for Harrisburg. Very disciplined team. Tanner. Knocked away again. Harrisburg in the white. Counterattacking. Angelo Panzetta. Help Carbonero steal for Cleveland. Carriage. Settles it. Again, knocked away from him. Scott Henderson and Carriage guilty of the foul and a penalty. Uh, Carriage uh, putting an elbow into the side of Scott Henderson's head. And, uh, you know, Carriage is an intense player. Actually, it was uh, Danny Kelly that's down for the Harrisburg Heat. You look at this, a 50-50 ball. And, uh, yeah, that's clearly a penalty. I mean, one way to get to the 50-50 ball is put an elbow into somebody's ear, but that's not legal. Carriage will sit two minutes now in the NPSL scoring system. David, you want to explain what's going on right now? Well, it's a wild and crazy game, and this is mono on mono. This is a shootout situation worth one point, and then Harrisburg will have a two-minute power play during which they can score a goal. It will count as one point. If Cleveland scores a shorthanded goal, it still counts as two. But the yellow line 50 feet out is uh, where the shootout will start from, and it's Otto or who has to go one-on-one. -on -one. It looks like, uh, let's see who they draw as the uh, shootout. Kelly is the guy who's taken all their shootouts, all playoffs, but he's the guy who took the elbow in the head. I was just going to say, Richard Chittipu is the one who gets the draw. I think uh, uh, Kelly still wants somebody to answer the phone because he got a real bell ringer. So now it's Chinapu, experience against Otto Orff. Chinapu rolls it in, <laughs> and it's not easy to do. Orff was best in the league this year, 19 out of 28. It's stopping the shootout. Well, I'll tell you what, they call uh, Richard Chinapu's nickname is Cool Breeze out of Long Island University. Play with the Cosmos. He's been around a long time. And, yeah, Cool Breeze, good nickname. Does he look flustered? <laughs> no, not at all. And he, he, that was planned off the woodwork. He knew it was going to splinter the woodwork, go into the back of the net. Boy, no tension there. Pretty goal. Give that man a cup of coffee. Not even a sweat. Look at that. Didn't break a sweat. You look at Orff. Again, there's only so much he can do, and at this point, uh, it looks like he probably should have come out a little bit stronger. He's like, what's going on here? And I think he expected a stronger charge from Richard Chinapu. Cleveland is now a man down. Harrisburg with a man advantage, playing five on four foul on venture, and Cleveland will set it up in the Harrisburg third. And then these two teams really went at it last night in Harrisburg. At one point, Harrisburg was up 12-4. to So, again, the, the pattern is starting to play out early. Harrisburg with a 3-0 lead. Marinero on target. Talia has it for the year. Harrisburg ninth in the league. 
converting at 31 percent. Cleveland 10th at killing penalties at 60 percent. So these were not teams that shined in their respective roles in this situation. But again, I really believe in the playoffs. You know, you can almost throw out the stats, even the stars. You don't know who the hero is going to be, and you don't know what's going to happen on any given shift. Nassim Alabi in red, pressuring up high. He had more shorthanded goals than anyone in the league <laughs> last year, this year. Abe. John Abe makes the move, shoots wide. Well, there's a reason for that. Alabi's got the speed. Abe will bring it back up high. Chinapu and Danny Kelly outside the yellow line, then inside the Cleveland third. To Shantrett in the middle. He has the ball. Back to Kelly. Blocked to midfield. You also have John Abe lurking at the far post as they try to get the ball to him and Betcher. Cleveland's penalty killers, a lobby up high. Carboneras two, Fernandez six, Tima number 17. Well, they call Cleveland the rock and roll city, and they're playing some rock and roll here tonight at the Convocation Center, maybe trying to hurt the Harrisburg Heat's ears. <laughs> yeah, but they still haven't built that rock and roll Hall of Fame. The Crunch will win a title probably before uh, they get the Hall of Fame up and constructed. They'll build a couple more stadiums before they get the Hall of Fame. Only 15 seconds left in the power play. Abe off the boards. Fernandez. Heads it away. George Fernandez third in the league in the all-defender voting. Carriage is out in three seconds. And we're back at five aside. Now we're back to playing for two points for Harrisburg as well. They get the one point on the shootout. Regular goals when we're at even strength, worth two apiece. And from outside the yellow line, don't forget about the three-point shot. The guy that just came out of the penalty box has made a specialty out of that. The three-point goal, if you shoot it from between the yellow line and the midfield stripe, and it goes into the net, it's worth three. Marinero. Henderson fights hard with him, and Harrisburg will get the ball back into Malia. He was nicely double-teamed, and Miller was able just to get the ball away and get it back to Malia. That's good defense. That's a three-line pass. The goalkeeper can throw it as far as he wants, but if he uses his feet, he can't ice the puck, as you'd say in hockey, from one yellow line past the other. And this is exactly what Harrisburg does not want to do. No team playing the Cleveland Crunch wants to give them set-piece opportunities. You want to keep them... Out on the field, you don't want to give him a chance to set up when you got guns like Carriage and Marinero who are going to be out around the ball, which is 50 feet out. Marinero scored more three-point goals, and that's what he's shooting at here than anyone in league history this year. Here he comes. That was blocked by Scott Henderson, and then a foul in the corner. Now, Marinero took the shot. It's either Marinero or Carriage will take the shot. And, of course, Harrisburg committing the foul, so what do they have to do? They have to defend another set piece. There you see Marinero cranking up, blocked in traffic. That's good defense on the part of Scott Henderson, but then a foul to the right of the box. They're not out of the woods yet, though. As it's 3-2, to two, Karich feeds the ball in front. I said, you don't want to give Cleveland set pieces. Carriage sees something in the wall. The wall started to move there a little bit. He was able to ricochet it into the back of the net. It's 3-2, Harrisburg in game two of this best of three series. Candace for your team or league. A soccer ball that's one kick ahead of all the others. Jim Pollahan, the Harrisburg coach, his team must win tonight. What instructions is he giving the players? We'll listen in. He has been mic tonight, and we'll get his comments. He promised me to do the weather forecast, too. <laughs> A lobby steals the ball. And Harrisburg will knock it away. That's Danny Kelly. Tried to play it long for Doug Miller. He's going to get Miller. Miller gets a step on Schlott. Oh, and his shot just missed. Again, that's a big part of Harrisburg's philosophy. Uh, Jim Pollan loves players with speed, and that's why he took this kid, Doug Miller, in his second year as a pro, and he's really done wonders this year for Harrisburg. Kelly tries to set up Bob Lilly running into the Cleveland third. Once the ball crosses the yellow line, the Cleveland defenders can touch it and play to the goalkeeper, and that's what happened. And we've yet to see Franklin McIntosh for the Harrisburg Heat. Uh, an ankle apparently the problem. 
McIntosh, 157 points on the year. One of the league's big stars. Foul on Harrisburg's Bob Lilly. But I tell you what, Danny Kelly's had a great playoff. In fact, leads the uh, Heat playoff scoring-wise with 16 points. So in his absence, you got to look for number nine uh, with the long black hair for Harrisburg out of Penn State University, the veteran. And uh, he's got to really step up on offense tonight with it looks like McIntosh out for a while. Carriage. George Fernandez now back to Tommy Tanner, number eight in the red uniform for Cleveland. Tim Tima, all-time leader in games played in the league. And there's your MVP, Marinero, with the ball. Back to Tima. Carriage wants to leave it for Hector. Nope. He'll take it away. Angelo Penzetta. They've got a numbers advantage. Four on three. They get the ball to Panzetta. Winds up. Doesn't get the shot away. Tima hits the ground for Cleveland. And John Pro will bring it back to midfield, and they'll try again. Well, we saw that. That's what Harrisburg can do very effectively, using that speed. They can get numbers up. To Jantred. Nope. Tima will get their first and play it into Orff. Here comes the counterattack. This is where Cleveland's dangerous, but Harrisburg snuffs it out. Bill Betcher. Over to Abe, left foot, no. Deschantret can't follow it in. Otto Orp to George Fernandez. Again, Harrisburg intercepts. Chinapu to midfield. Tanner making his life miserable. Chinapu gets free. Miller, no! Missed it wide right. That's going to haunt Dougie Miller. It was a beautiful shot by Jennifer. Carriage from Marinero. Back to Hector. Score! Really good. The Cleveland Spider just invited the fly of Harrisburg into their web. Well, there you see, when these two are on a counterattack and there's no defenders back, you see Chinapu try to block the shot from Marinero. But you're not going to stop it. It's just not going to happen. And Hector now is putting the Cleveland ahead. Cleveland puts ahead 4-3 to three with an assist from his line mate, the Z-man, Zorn Carrots. These guys do not miss when they're given the whole doorstep. But I tell you what, Doug Miller with the ball now, he's got to be... Thinking, uh, he's got to get it out of his mind, but the Jamie missed that one opportunity because it would have been Harrisburg up 5-2. to two. Panzetta. Back to Kelly on top of the arc. Oh, good sliding tackle. Here comes Cleveland again. Carbonara. Chips one. Wide. Malia will get it. And I was just about to say, Harrisburg in many cases have had three defenders back, and now they're starting to push it up more. Abe settles it. Kelly's shot is just wide. Eddie Kelly gets it back again. Lilly can't step it through. Cleveland to give you those chances like Miller had, the one you were talking about, how he laments that he missed it earlier. They don't mind because if you don't put it away, they're sure to score on the other end. Well, Hector comes back on. You hear the crowd responds, and now Harrisburg's defense better get back when he's out on the carpet. Again, we've seen Otto Wolf dribbling the ball a lot tonight, not throwing up field. I think it's because in many cases, Harrisburg has had three defenders back. To Chantret. Hard shot. Stays with it, but Orff's equal. Tanner has carriage to the right. Harrisburg had that one covered. They'll get it into Malia. I tell you what, though, it was a three-on-two for Cleveland, and Joe Malia calling a timeout, and I think with good reason. Harrisburg all of a sudden looks at sixes and sevens on defense. And Cleveland's gone in front, four to three. DR trimmer mower. Game two of the best of three American Division finals. If Cleveland wins, the series is over. The goalkeepers are Joe Malley on the left for Harrisburg, Otto Wolf of Cleveland on the right. Well, the Heat so far is better the play. They've had nine shots to Cleveland's five, but I think the reason Jim Pollan may have wanted a time out there, Harrisburg all of a sudden showing some openings on defense. And believe me, when you got Hector Barrett, Arizona, and Carriage, you can't give them carpet space. They did, and now the crunch have taken the 4-3 lead. Joe Malia launches it to his opposing keeper, Orr. 
Mark Thomas. Harrisburg will take it away again. It's so dangerous to get behind Cleveland. Harrisburg desperately must avoid that. No, Harrisburg wants to be in the other position of, of just having to worry about playing defense and not playing catch-up. Betcher's shot turned away by Orr. Betcher, one of the lucky ones on the Harrisburg team. His damage is in his thumb. He just puts the cast on and goes out and plays. Well, it's, it's tough. And we should point out, Cleveland's got nursing some nagging injuries as well. This is April. These guys are feeling every trip on the floor. John Pro, rookie from Evansville. Stop, John. Keep going. Keep going. Right. The Purple Aces. John, John, find man. He moves Stop. into the Purple of Harrisburg now. He's the big tall player on top of the arc. Back it comes to Chinapu. We're inside a minute to go in the first quarter. The home team, Cleveland, on top by one point, 4-3. So we play for the two-point goal. Harrisburg is pressing right, right now. In many cases, they're leaving Richard Chinapu as the lone man out on defense, and that could be risky, but obviously Pollyham wants points right now. Danny Kelly. Sends one to the right corner. Miller got the first goal of the game, but he can't get under it. Carbonero off the boards, and then take a hop to North. Carriage. No, Crow hustles back to knock it away. Well, there you saw a situation where four white shirts were back, and that's tough for Orff. I mean, he's going for Carriage, but his odds are against him. It's one on four. Is Harrisburg going to get a shot away? To Chantret, to Abe, in front of the goal. Oh, Lilly couldn't put it in, and Cleveland ends the first quarter with a 4-3 lead. They're three quarters away from advancing to the NPSL Championship Series. Get enough of America's first World Cup? You will in Soccer America. He's easily the leading scorer in the playoffs for the Harrisburg Heat, but Franklin McIntosh hasn't taken off the warm-up jersey tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, the Heat's still hanging in there down by one point, but they miss this guy because he's a hard-nosed offensive player and also can get back on defense. You look at the stats, I mean, look at this. Shots, Harrisburg overwhelming against Cleveland, 11 to 5. That's a bit of a surprise because you'd expect Harrisburg maybe to play it more defensively, although we did know that Harrisburg is the type of team that comes out strong from the opening gun. Foul on Harrisburg's Panzetta. This will give Cleveland another dangerous yeah, restart. No, they, Harrisburg does not want this. In fact, they scored. Carriage scored on this, a similar situation in the first quarter, and he's, gonna, of course, going to take it again. Marinero's calling for the ball on the left side. They find him. Yeah. He's just too good. You can see this one coming a mile away. Harrisburg's packed it in on defense, but Marinero comes knifing through. No one picks him up. And he gets the header off. Look at that. No one is on him. You can't let Hector Marinero alone. He's going to hurt you. He just hurt the Heat. And now it's a 6-3 game. This is going to be a critical stretch as we open the second quarter. Kelly right on target. Worf scoops it up. Wants to throw to midfield. Here comes Carriage. Marinero can't get that one. Soren Carriage in each of the big games Marinero's had, tying and then breaking the league scoring record. Carriage was the man on the assist, tying an assist record for the league in each of those games. And of course, he was the MVP in the All-Star game, so he is fun to watch. Now, Harrisburg again is pushing it up, and let's see what they can do on offense. Abe shot turned away by Ord. I don't want to overstate anything, but if Harrisburg doesn't start finishing when they push forward, this game could be over in a hurry. Well, I'll tell you what, the one thing that you have to be concerned about is Harrisburg has had two golden opportunities they were unable to finish. And again, in playoff competition, no matter what team you are, it is all about finishing at critical times. When you get that open net, you've got to finish it. Chinapu, strong enough to hold off the Cleveland players and dump one to midfield. A lobby will take it for Cleveland at the yellow line. 
Mark Thomas, shot is wide to the right, Value will hang on to it. Well, it's become a good line, and the lobby is the one that makes it go. Abe flicks one in front, no one there. Just Fernandez to play it down to Earth. Yeah, he would have been better off to hold the ball because the last thing we want is possession back to Cleveland. The lobby will slide it to Fernandez at midfield. Can he get a lobby again? Nope. Medved's got it. Carriage Marinero, we talk about them all night. Fernandez, who got the foul against the Shantra, what a player he is, went to the Hong Kong World Indoor Championship, scored four goals, three assists, was the best defender on the United States team. Truly an unsung hero in and Cleveland. He, and he drove Franklin McIntosh nuts tonight, so Fernandez getting a bit of a break tonight, not having to deal with a, a player of McIntosh's intensity. In fact, McIntosh may be on that bench just because he had Fernandez shallowing me all night. That's going to take its toll physically. Fernandez is a guy that does not give an inch. He knows how to work a player, knows how to get a player riled up. That's part of being a defender. All NPSL second team, George Fernandez. Chinapu's into the crowd with it. And Otto Orff will take the ball and have a goal kick. Hector Marinero, not a bad year, Dave Johnson. <laughs> well, look at those, those numbers. I'd like to get that back on my tax return. Most shots, 365, 248 points. But there's the number that really stands out, the century mark in goals. He broke 10 NPSL records. In fact, he should be on the cover of the record book next year, and they maybe should call the award the Hector Award because he really has been like a one-man festival of goals all season. And really, it's neat to see it here at Cleveland. When they introduce him to the crowd, everybody's on their feet, and he gets the loudest cheer, and deservedly so, because he has been nothing short of electrifying this season. Or for another pretty fair player, Zoran Karic. Of course, it helps to have a guy like Zoran Karic working right next to you. Karic and Marinero, both first team, all NPSL. No one had ever gone over 200 points before. You saw the gaudy numbers put up by Marinero. Karic was right behind him at 222. Here comes Miller. Can he get it over to Panzetta? He does! And Harris puts back within a point. Well, we've talked about this. This is what Harrisburg needs to do on offense because it increases their percentages. They get numbers up by playing good defense, then using that speed through midfield. Beautiful ball by Dougie Miller. Just gets ahead of the lobby, pans out of this. is great finishing. He sees Orff down, puts it high, but Miller makes this play because he's got to thread the needle. Lobby's one step away from interception. Panzetta bangs it home, and now we've got a one-point game. Six to five, Cleveland. <laughs> Angel, Angel, look at that hair. Now, does, does he look like a hard rocker? You keep talking about Cleveland, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Angelo Panzetta says to relax and unwind, he puts on heavy metal music and eats pizza. But I remember when he had a crew cut. He's definitely gone through some phases. <laughs> so obviously now in, in the Rock and Roll City, you know, he's, he's taking a page and he's uh, getting that shoulder length hair. But Paul he, he, doesn't care. If he scores, it's fine. He's out of the Everly Brothers stage. He does the music for the introductions, by the way, in Harrisburg. Miller banged. Shinapu holds for Harrisburg. Wants to come to midfield to Danny Kelly, who goes to the same barber as Panzetta. Miller again. Oh, yes, pro! Harrisburg's in front! Big John Pro's first goal of the playoffs. He only had five in 40 games all year. Well, if Harrisburg is going to have success, and you see Otto Orff doesn't know what's going on because a guy like John Poe shouldn't be scoring on him, but look at this. He can if he's open like that. A three-on-two, another numbers-up situation for the Harrisburg Heat. And if you get guys like John Poe jumping into the offense, the rookies getting involved, making up for the absence of the McIntosh and company, Harrisburg has a chance. Harrisburg's caught back in front. They need to win to stay alive. First edition, all-new Pacific... Harrisburg, were they on the ropes? Down six to three, no way. <laughs> Seven to six, they're using that speed that Jim Pollahan loves. He loves the players that with the speed and good defensive skills. They use that to turn this game around because Cleveland looked like they were gonna walk off with it. And that's what MPSL soccer is all about. You don't give other teams opportunities, no matter how down they are injury wise. If the opportunity is there, you create space on the carpet, which Harrisburg is doing again. They get right back at the game, in fact, have the lead. Fernandez for carriage. <laughs> He's magic, but that time they can't finish on his back heel. To Chantred against Medved. 
Abe couldn't get there. And again, you saw a lot of white shirts back on defense. If I'm Harrisburg right now, that's what I want to see. Look out. Oh. Is it a two-minute penalty? No, and well, Carrots can't that's, believe it. That's close. That's close to getting called. And that, uh, obviously, right on the fault line. You look at the replay, Carrots turns on Panzetta, and Panzetta, a little jersey jostling, and it takes him right out of play. But uh, Panzetta looks out there, maybe because of the haircut. This is still a dangerous situation. Carriage, look for Marinero. There he runs across the top of your screen over to the right side. This wall better not break up. They went inside that time to try to find Fernandez, who couldn't put it in. Well, here's what it's all about. I mean, for Harrisburg, you know, the future is now. But if they can extend it to Wednesday, they get maybe a Dennis Hamlet back, uh, one of their top marking defenders, and it's a whole new series. Not only a whole new series, but a one-game series. And Harrisburg right now just trying to force it to Game 3. In the National Division, well, this game getting underway in about 10 minutes, St. Louis and Kansas City. How do you call this one? In one game, Kansas City looks great. In the other game, St. Louis looks overpowering. It'll all be decided tonight at the Kemper Arena. We will keep you up to date on that score throughout the evening. What's amazing about those numbers, Kansas City went into St. Louis and won the first game. Then St. Louis bludgeoned KC 15 to 4. That was in Kemper, Kansas City's home court, where they will play tonight. Well, Kansas City is, is much improved on defense, although they didn't show it in game two. But again, as, as we talked this about there was with Jim Pollahan and Gary Henley knows it too. Defense really turns out to be the difference in the playoffs. We know it's a cliche, but doggone it, it really is the case. Harrisburg from three-point range. Kelly, nope. Coming up at halftime in the locker room. We'll have a playoff update on the National Division Finals between the St. Louis Ambush and the Kansas City Attack. Also live interviews and a look at who's won the top honors. Player of the year, coach of the year, goalkeeper of the year, rookie of the year. All coming up in the locker room. I tell you, that was tough balloting for the league honors this year. You, you go category by category. I mean, obviously, Hector Marinero may be an easy one, but tough in certain categories like Rookie of the Year and Coach of the Year because a lot of talented coaches in this league that, that had great stories for one reason or the other and a lot of great rookies in the league this year. Yeah, especially in the coaching category, I agree with you. You have guys like Terry Nickel and Dayton who turned a team that had won nine games the year before into a 500 team. He didn't even show up in the top three. Chinapu, no, punched aside by Orr. Hollihan also from Harrisburg. What a great job he's done. He wasn't in the top three. Well, in all candidness, uh, he, that was my vote, uh, Jim Hollihan, but uh, we'll let you know who the winner was at halftime. Carriage again for Cleveland. Whistle stops action. They're going to say the ball was knocked back in by a Harrisburg player, and so Cleveland will get a restart at that yellow three-point line. Again, tense moments now for the Harrisburg defense. If you're part of that two-man wall, John Pro and Doug Miller, this is the guy they got to face. You talk about Neil for steel nerves. Kick save, Malia. Miller, it's been the Doug Miller show for Harrisburg tonight. A goal and a couple of assists. Uh-oh, Carriage in the corner. Fighting with Malia. Malia stands his ground. Malia did a good job there. The fans wanted a foul. All right, Malliot, look what he's got to face here. Goes through the wall, and all he can do is get the foot save. You say, why don't you get down on that? Well, at that point, it's coming in too hard. You get down on it. First, you might not get to it. Second of all, it's going to bounce off you, and it's going to be in play close into the box. That way, with the foot save, it's the heck out of the box. Carriage with the ball. He's number 16. Keep your eye on number 21, Hector Marinero. He's at the bottom right of your screen. Just out of the picture right now. Now you look at that angle. It looks like a chip shot for Zoran Karic, and that's why Malia going nuts because it's crowded there, but it's close in. Hector blocked on the line. And bang back to midfield. Well, you know, it ricocheted around like a pinball there. Tense moments, but Harrisburg dodging the bullet again. They have the lead seven to six. Karic took his eye off the ball. He gets it back. Pro again plays it back into his defensive third, give it back to Cleveland. Well, look at Joe Malley. I mean, he's had some intense moments tonight, and here we go again. He's facing a, a free kick, and now it gets inside him, but fortunately, Chinapu is right there. Otherwise, punch player there to bang it home. Once again at the three-point line. Look at... 
carriage. Plays it to Marinero. Oh, he spanked it. It's loose. It's in. Medved gets the goal for Cleveland. You look at the replay. This is what does it. The half volley. It's hard to handle. But look at this. Medved sneaks in underneath the defense. And that's what Malley is mad about. He doesn't know how Medved's allowed to be right there at the doorstep. Look where Medved is. He's right there to finish it off. And Malia wants one of his defenders, either Bob Lilly or Richard Chinapu, to get between Medved and the ball. Again, he makes the save. That's all you can do. Almost makes two saves. But Medved is allowed to be from five feet out, and you're not going to miss. Sean Medved puts Cleveland back in front. Another underrated Cleveland player. Sean Medved almost went with that United States National Silver Medal winning team in Hong Kong. He just arrived late in the camp, but was a pool of 15 player, one of the final cuts. Excellent player from the Pacific Northwest. Yeah, from a uh, you know, great soccer country up in the Seattle area. And as Sean Medved, that's what you got to do. Get in underneath the defense, and if you do that, you get an easy goal like he got. But credit him for sneaking in, knifing in, seeing the opportunity on Hector Marinero's shot. That's smart soccer. Malia shows off his arm to Scott Henderson. Or kicks it away, followed by Henderson. And Tim Bartro up to midfield, overshoots everyone. Joe Malia, the Harrisburg goalkeeper. Doesn't want to see Sean Medved up that close anymore tonight. Chinabu still fighting in the oh. corner. Play on. It'll be a dangerous play on the Cleveland player for putting himself in that situation. It sounds heartless, but that's the whistle. Yeah, well, you know, he was definitely tripped up. Look at Chinapu and uh, Carbonero banging around. And uh, Carbonero gets every worst end of this. And not only that, the foul. But he's still standing. Chinapu. Here's where they miss Franklin McIntosh. Well, they certainly do, but they, get, they have some players that can finish it, like Bill Betcher, who nice into the box. Miller, maybe for the first time tonight. Misses. And look at Otto Warp. I mean, yeah, he's happy it went over the glass, but he's unhappy the way it went over the glass. It was a case of Doug Miller not finishing it. We had Betcher knifing through, and then Miller getting a half volley open shot from the top of the arc. So Orff has got a few words for Glenn Carbonero, who's also a just. We've seen some interesting hairstyles tonight. That's a new one from Glenn Carbonero. I think that's more aerodynamically sound than Panzetta. That's got to be a haircut for speed. Uh, definitely a haircut for speed. You need that in the playoffs. So that's what Glenn Carbonero is thinking, whereas Panzetta's got more of the image he's got to protect. <laughs> Harrisburg will get it into their goalkeeper, Malia. None of this will affect how you play on the carpet. Out. Although some players would argue that. Harrisburg in the white, lobs one into the Cleveland third in the red. Cleveland won the opener in Harrisburg. Kelly can't get through. If they win tonight, they win the best of three series 2-9 and advance to the finals. Harrisburg applying the pressure. John Abe. To Chad Red can't get it. Well, Harrisburg was up 3-2 in numbers. Carriage. Malia comes out to cut down the angle and get rid of it. And now they're way down. Abe. Knocks it out to midfield. Harrisburg honest on defense, keeping it away from Malia. And as Kelly goes down, blow the whistle against Schlotauer of Cleveland. Now Schlotauer gets called for the foul, but a good, nice uh, double-team job on the part of the Harrisburg Heat defense. They double-teamed John A. part of that double-team on Zorn Carriage. They protected uh, Joe Malia, and they prevented Carriage from making the turn close in at the box. to Chandret for Harrisburg back to Chinapu. They continue to work on the right side. Carriage dumps to midfield. Cleveland is back defensively. Bob Lilly. Poked away Tim Tima from to Chandret. John Medved spins it away. Up to Marinero. He gives it to Carriage and then runs. But Chinapu stays right with him. Well, Chinapu has been a key tonight on defense. Number seven for Harrisburg. He's been staying back. And Jim Pollahan with uh, some defensive problems because of injuries, going with Chinapu, who is more of a midfielder forward type. But Chinapu also can play defense, and he's got the skill and experience. Two on one again. Hector Marinero winds up. Blocked by Chinapu. 
And then in the corner, will he try to bang one in front? Can't. That was great defense on the part of Chinapu. He, he was in, in a bad position, had to get back. He was two on one. He was the one, but he was still able to block a Hector Marinero shot. That's why Chinapu, one of the all-stars for Harrisburg. 6.30 to go in the half. Cleveland eight, Harrisburg seven. Cleveland playing to advance with a victory to the NPSL Championship Series. Harrisburg, if they win, forces a deciding game three on Wednesday night. Yeah, that's me. Up by a point. Jim Pollahan said that, interestingly enough, he wants his team to concentrate on getting more points. Getting more points, pressuring the ball, because he knows that, you know, Cleveland's not going to be held to eight points, but he's happy with the effort so far. He doesn't want to see heads going down. And very positive, very energetic coach, and that's why you see the break right now. Henderson can't get it to Miller. Panzetta will follow. Blocked. Kelly for three. Why? Kelly can't fight his way back in to get a shot away. And it'll bounce out of play. Let's listen to Jim Pollahan and hear it in his words. Zinn, let's think about what we did and not make the same mistake again. Let's pressure the ball. Let's get it out quickly. Joe, if you can on those, if you can punch him or just knock him back out. Let's, hey, let's stick together, guys. We're not going to keep Harrisburg them at eight with a points. chance to we jump right back in too. front. Under 11. Chinapu, Kelly, nope. Block. Cleveland will dump it to midfield for Thomas. Malu will come out and beat him to the ball. Fernandez dummies it, lets it bounce into his goalkeeper. Otto or Cleveland. Well, again, Harrisburg wants pressure on the ball. That's what Jim Pollahan wants because that'll start the counterattack. You gotta play good, tight marking in midfield. You're gonna see that from the Harrisburg Eagles. Again, right there pressuring Otto Orr. Marinero, Abe knocks it away. His goalkeeper Malu will dive and cover. Abe up to midfield again. Coming up at halftime in the locker room, we'll look at the playoffs, the individual awards. Bob Lilly can't quite get it. Orff thought he was banged. They say play on. Otto comes up, pitches the ball. That was a great give on go, but again, Harrisburg unable to finish Lilly about a step too late. John Abe. No, Fernandez, omnipresent. Carriage tried to get it through to a lobby, miss hit it. Harrisburg will run it down in their own third. I'll tell you what, Harrisburg is getting through the midfield with relative ease. The Cleveland defense getting back, but they're get, Harrisburg is getting some room to work with in the Cleveland defensive third. Now you see Tim Tima stepping in because he gives no one any room. Ball well, kicked out of play. Tim Tima, the all-time leader in penalty minutes. He racked up 40 this year, but it was Harrisburg's Franklin McIntosh who wore the crown with 50 of them. And again, an offensive player. I mean, Franklin McIntosh is on the bench for Harrisburg. You know, we talked about his offensive skills, but also, you know, he doesn't take anything. If he gets fouled by a defender, he fouls back. You look at Tim Tima, though, I mean, that's just experience, and uh, it's a guy that Gary Hindley goes to a lot to help anchor the Cleveland defense along with George Fernandez. We near four and a half minutes to play in the first half. The visitors from Harrisburg, down in numbers and down one game to none, are hanging tough. They're only behind by a point. Uh-oh, Carriage, Malia leaps and punches it aside. Okay, when he came hopping through like a kangaroo, and that's just a terrific save because he knew if Carriage had one more bit of daylight, it was over. Carriage for a lobby whose header is wide, high on the glass. Value will catch and throw it out to Danny Kelly. All right, look at Joe Malia. I mean, he's five foot nine inches, but he's got a sky on this one because he sees it gets over Henderson. Carriage is right there. Here comes Malia. You don't think that takes guts? You got a leg swinging around that's about gut high and you're flying through the air. I mean, that's uh, just another day at the office for the goalkeeper. And for Zoran Carriage, it's a missed opportunity. But a guy that if he had that opportunity, if Malia didn't get in his way, it could have been all she wrote. Malia had the league's first shutout this year back on January 24th. 13 to nothing winner over Wichita in Harrisburg. And then they went to Brett Phillips late in the season as a goalkeeper. So Malia has to come in because of the ankle injury to Phillips. And Malia does not look rusty at all. Looks strong in the Baltimore series. Has looked good so far in the Cleveland series. Good chance, Red. And Kelly, but it's Medved for Cleveland. To Carriage. There's his turn. There's his shot. And his score. Well, 
this is what makes Zoran Karic. I mean, he is being defended there, but he makes that turn. He gets that step. He gets that space. He gets that goal. Look at this. He turns on Henderson, turns around, and bangs it home. And goes right there to Sean Medved. Very intense player, but a big smile there. And a smile wiped away from Joe Malia's face. Two goals, two assists already tonight for the Z-man, Zoran Karic. And Harrisburg is down by three in their must-win game. Cleveland strips it away. Mark Thomas. Harrisburg has all the white shirts back defensively. Thomas keeps it coming, though. Well, we talk about uh, Harrisburg not wanting to get behind Cleveland, but they've come back once before tonight, and I have a feeling they're going to do it again. They were behind three earlier at 6-3. Next time you looked up, they were up 7-6. Cleveland with four unanswered points has reclaimed the lead. All the action coming on the boards in front of the benches. Thomas will scoot it out to a lobby. Carbonara is the trailer on the play. But John Pro stands his ground and blocks the shot. Tommy Tanner hustles into the corner. Tanner's shot is kicked aside by Malia. Tanner surveys the scene and bring it back to midfield. So a nice work in midfield by Cleveland to get the ball possession. Now they have the ball possession. They get Carriage back out on the carpet, but it was a good shift for the second line. Carriage, good ball in front to Hector. He goes down, no call. I think the referee was actually right on that, that case. Uh, I mean, uh, some pushing and shoving, but Hector, I think, was lobbying for the call. John Abe on the boards against Tima. Uses a screen from Chinapu. The shot won't go. And the ball will be popped back into Otto Warp. Here's Orr's arm again. Carriage with Marinero in front. He found him. Oh, he hit oh. the post. That all started with great vision on Otto Warp. He saw that Harrisburg was numbers down, but the Marinero saved for the crossbar, unable to finish it. Marinero steals. He has Carriage long this time. Carriage back to Hector. Slides, and it's saved on the line by Malia. Right at that to Chinapu, he forced Marinero to make a tough shot. Cleveland's still coming. Well, Harrisburg's got to get out of this half. All of a sudden, uh, Cleveland is, is unloading an avalanche of offense. And this is already a beaten up Harrisburg defense, so they're going to face a few more challenges. 120 to go in the half. 10-7 Cleveland. If they win, they advance to face either St. Louis or Kansas City in the NPSL Finals. Carriage again against Scott Henderson. Henderson stands his ground. Carriage and Abe. John Abe comes out with the ball. We're inside a minute to go in the half. Honest John Abe has his shot blocked by Schlatter. Kelly will pick it up behind the yellow line for Harrisburg. Again blocked. They want to go to Carriage. Back with him is Scott Henderson, and he'll just roll it into Malia. You know, we talk so much about the Harrisburg defense, but give a lot of credit to the Cleveland defense because Harrisburg getting some shots off, but the defense tightening up and then not to, you know, making out of worth a target, and that's going to make out of worth happen. To Chandrette, side 20. Danny Kelly makes a nice move over the top there, stolen by Thomas, and Harrisburg gets the numbers back defensively. Chinapu's right there, will bounce it off the boards. With five seconds left, Malia's ball crosses midfield. Foul at midfield on Danny Kelly with just one second left. Coming up at the half, a playoff update on the National Division Finals between St. Louis and Kansas City. That's a deciding game three tonight. Live interviews and a look at all the league's top honors. Coming up inside the locker room, and it's halftime in Cleveland. The Crunch 10, Harrisburg 7. Call now. Welcome back to Cleveland. Halftime score, the Crunch 10 and Harrisburg 7. If Cleveland holds on to win, they advance to the NPSL Championship Series. They would play either St. Louis or Kansas City. Harrisburg, if they should win, would force a deciding game three on Wednesday night. Welcome back to Cleveland State's Convocation Center, along with Dave Johnson, Dave Phillips, and Dave Cleveland 
up by three. It's a position they want to be in, not necessarily up by a lot, but forcing Harrisburg to force action. Well, it's been a very intense uh, game, very intense uh, first half. Cleveland certainly where they want to be at the halftime point, but Harrisburg has given them a fight in the first half. In fact, at one point, Cleveland got a good, strong lead, 6-3, to three, but then Harrisburg came back to take a 7 to six leads. So Harrisburg, I don't think, is out of this. They're doing it with lasers and mirrors and good defense on the part of Richard Chinapu. Look inside the Harrisburg Heat Locker Room right now and Coach Jim Pollahan. Then we stopped doing it. We started dribbling through the midfield area and we, we've lost a couple balls that they created chances from and scored goals from. Let's get the ball up to them and then support. Get it up to them quickly and support. If, if they can hold it, great. If we lose it up there, then we're still behind the ball. But what's happening, we're getting one and two guys in front of the ball and it's not getting to them and they're, they're pinching some balls. They're working hard. Hey, the last five, six minutes, they were beating us to the ball. They were winning tackles, guys. They were getting stuck in, especially along the boards. Be strong. Go in strong. Use your body and shield the ball. we got to shield a little bit better. Get a first touch on it and then play it. we got to play it to the open man because they're gang tackling along the boards. Get it off the boards and look across the field. Plenty of room on the other side of the field. The field is wide. Let's use it a little bit. Guys, we're in good position. We're in good position. We just need to come out we need to get the next goal sometime in this third period. Doesn't even have to be early in the third. Hallahan, That's the Harrisburg coach, his team came in fourth in the American Division. They knocked out the first place team, Baltimore, in two straight. He has his work cut out for him here in the second half. He does indeed, but I think you just saw it in the locker room. He's a very positive coach. You, you might even think he was ahead at halftime. And I think that's part of the secret of the success of this Harrisburg team, why they were able to sustain an eight-game losing streak during the regular season, still slip into the playoffs, still beat Baltimore in the first round. And, of course, now they're down at halftime, but he's encouraging them, giving them the instructions they need. Now it's all a matter of execution. Let's second guess a little bit, play coach up here. Harrisburg pushed forward trying to get points. All season long, they've been very successful playing defensively. Was it a surprise at all? Well, I think uh, at one point they, you know, there were times where they had no one back on defense. That part was a surprise. I think, though, they've got to do some work at midfield, which is what they were doing, pressuring at midfield, but only if they've got somebody back because if Otto Orff grabs that ball for Cleveland, he's going to throw it downfield, and you're going to have one-on-none situations with Joe Malia, the sitting duck. So I think a bit of surprise just how much they were pushing, but certainly they've got to push pressure to create the counterattacks. Let's take a look at the award winners from the regular season just completed here in the NPSL. The most valuable player, who else is it going to be? Hector Marinero. Now that uh, certainly had to be on the top of everyone's list. I mean, Hector with 100 goals, you've got to give it to him. The goalkeeper of the year, Chris Vaccaro, in Baltimore was second in points against average. Well, it was a tough decision, but I think you look at the stretch and also the fact that he played most of the games in Baltimore, won the American Division, and had to go to Vaccaro. Big reason why they won the American Division. On defense, Harrisburg may have Dennis Hamlet, but it was Wichita's Danish prince, Kim Runtved, who got the honor. Well, Kim Runtved, also an honorable mention for most valuable player. I mean, this guy can do it all, help out on offense, but he has to be the defender of the year, but he just has so much experience and so much skill. Rookie was Fred Phillips in Harrisburg. We've talked about and Zoran Savick the coach from Kansas City. Well Brett Phillips my selection certainly had a great uh, stretch and really a reason why Harrisburg was able to slip into the playoffs so credit to Brett Phillips and Zoran Savick hey with the Kansas City attack he took that team and he's got him right now in the National Division Finals so a credit to Zoran Savick. All right let's go down to the locker room again we're standing by outside the Harrisburg locker is head coach Jim Pollahan. Jim, your team was down 6-3. We were worried because when Cleveland gets ahead, they're tough. You came roaring back. Can you do it again? Well, we, we need to do it again. It's do or die for us today. Uh, you know, we need a victory here and another victory on Wednesday. Uh, we're in this game at 10-7. Uh, we, we need to stop losing the ball on our own end of the field, get the ball down the field quickly, and finish our chances, and we have a chance here. We, we played a very good first half but gave them some opportunities. Jim, can you talk about the role of Richard uh, Chittapu as we look at a goal first by uh, Doug Miller as he gets a great ball and you're going to see some great finishing by Angela and Panzetta. And that's the kind of situations you need is when you get numbers up. Well, we need to get to break out of the back like they break out of the back. We had uh, a two-on-two -two situation there, and we finished it well. Uh, if they get five guys behind the ball, they're tough to beat. When we have five guys behind the ball, we're tough to beat. So we need to transition that game to keep going. We need to get down the field quickly. If we lose it in their end, we have time to regroup. Can you talk about the role of Richard Chittapu at the back tonight? He just seems to be the, the rock steady on defense and is, is really uh, you know anchoring your defense tonight with all your injuries. Well, he has a lot of experience. Richard's uh, been in the league, played indoor soccer a long time, and uh, it's showing tonight. He wants to win. Uh, he's, he's been in these positions before, and he's given us good leadership. He's getting up and down the field very well. Uh, we're going to need a good second half from him. Jim, let us ask you one more question before you go, and that is you obviously must force the issue down 10 to 7. 
But when Cleveland can cheat Zoran Karic and Hector Marinero back and not force them to play defense, they are so tough. How do you watch that? Well, obviously, uh, we have to be very careful that we don't get too many people forward because they'll, they'll burn you on that. Uh, there's 30 minutes left in this game, and we're down three points. That's not a very big margin. And I feel if we keep playing the way we are, we'll create chances. We just have to finish them, and we have to contain those two players. Jim Pollahan, head coach Harrisburg, Heath, thank you very much for taking the time to visit with us. Thank you very much, guys. Our score at the half, Cleveland 10, Harrisburg 7. Game two of the best of three American Division Finals. When stress takes its toll, wouldn't it be great? Halftime score, Cleveland 10, Harrisburg 7. Again, if they win, they wrap up the American Division Championship and head into the NPSL Finals. Happy Easter. We're glad you're with us. I'm Dave Phillips. Dave Johnson's our analyst. George Ferris, our producer and director tonight. And this is the end of the regular season into the playoffs in the NPSL. Let's take a look at who the stars were during the regular season. Dave, run us through the first team. We look at the first team again. Chris McCall, the goalkeeper of the year in the NPSL, deservedly so in between the woodwork. Kim Ron Bennett and Sean Bowers. Boy, you'd love to have those guys on that one team. Kim Ron Bennett, a look at experience, a lot of skill. But Sean Bowers, an up-and-coming player with the Detroit Rockers, he's got a long future ahead of him in indoor soccer. Hector Marinero and, of course, the Zorian Carriage, that has to be your front line on the first team, both on the same team. But combined, they put 470 points together, so that's why they're part of the, uh, the, the first team. And also, Rudy Pikasinski of the uh, Buffalo Blizzard, which uh, played Cleveland in the first round of the American Division playoffs. Pikasinski, just a terrific finisher, but also... The type of guy that really makes the Buffalo Blizzard tick. And I think that's another reason why you had to vote for Rudy Pikasinski because to use that phrase, he's the heart and soul of the Blizzard. The rookies who are outstanding this year, and you see how it hurts Harrisburg. Is to be or not to be tonight for Dennis Hamlet? No. You know, the, the answer to the question was no, he, he couldn't play. Good night, sweet prince. He and Phillips aren't in the lineup. They were exceptional, and so were some other very young players. Well, Jason Dieter from Baltimore out of UMBC, he had a great uh, rookie season. All these guys, of course, had great rookie seasons. Barry Stitz from Baltimore from Towson State University. I mentioned Stitz and Dieter. They're part of what was known as the Beltway Connection in Baltimore. And these are two very young guys fresh out of college. Eric Eichmann, a bit of a veteran, he was on the U.S. World Cup team in 1990, but a rookie because his uh, rookie uh, venture indoors, and deservedly so, had a great job with Wichita. And Andy Crawford, I, I saw him many times for the Denver Thunder, and I'm glad he made the all-rookie team uh, the first team because he played on a club that was 3-37, and 37, but he was consistently strong all year long. And any guy that is a rookie and part of a 3-37 and 37 season but still can play as well as Andy Crawford uh, did certainly deserves a lot of votes, and I'm glad he got he, those votes. He was on the all-league first team, and here's a brilliant goal from the incomparable Zoran Karic. Well, you look at the... First of all, this is going to be Doug Miller finishing one early for the uh, uh, Harrisburg Heat. And uh, this got things going on. 2 nothing for the Harrisburg Heat. But you watch this. This is what Zoran Karic he gets the feed from Medved, and he turns on Scott Henderson. I mean, there's a defender right there. But when Karic gets that one step, all he has to do is trigger that right foot. And that right foot is a missile launcher. And you see the celebration with the guy who fed it to him, Medved. And that uh, put Cleveland up, and uh, really, that's just classic Zorin carriage, what we saw in the first half. We'll be back with the start of the second half, right after these men. Hi, I'm Johnny Bench. You know, to really understand... ...soccer league. Can this for your team or league? A soccer ball that's one kick ahead of all the others. Cleveland not satisfied with a first-round playoff win over Buffalo and apparently not going to be satisfied if they just get by Harrisburg. They are 30 minutes away from the finals. When well, you look at the first half stats again, Cleveland uh, leads on the scoreboard 10 to 7, but look at that. Shots, Harrisburg 21 to Cleveland's 12. It's an example of the pressure Harrisburg has been applying, but they've not had the finishing tonight, and that's been the difference. Otto Orff has come up big for the uh, Cleveland Crunch. Joe Malio with only four saves, but he's made some good ones. He's also a reason why this is such a close game. And it's been a relatively mild game between these two clubs, uh, six to five, and that's a wash in terms of fouls. It's been a lot of clean soccer. I think it's a case of, you know, both teams are nicked and bruised, and you really don't want to get overly physical because, uh, again, they played last night, and we, we talked so much about Harrisburg, but these Cleveland guys also feeling it as uh, Tim Barcho gives us the number one sign 
I mean, this Crunch franchise, they're trying to complete the double. Are they, you know, they have the all-star game. It's been a great year for them indoor soccer-wise, and they're trying to go all the way to the championship. And this has been a great indoor soccer city. I would assume right now, although that's been dangerous in this playoff series with both number one seats going out in straight sets, I would assume Cleveland is the favorite right now, now that they're over their injuries, the well, team to beat. I, I think, you know, they're always favored when you have Hector Mariner, Zoran Karic, and a, a fairly good defense that uh, at sometimes we don't talk enough about. But Harrisburg has got players like Angelo Panzetta, a lot of guys that uh, maybe don't grab the headlines, but then you have a coach like Jim Pollahan who puts it all together, and he makes a wonderful soccer casserole that uh, so far not only shocked the Baltimore spirit in the first round of the American Division playoffs, but this game is far from over. And game one last night was a 16-15 game. You know, Harrisburg's got a lot of young players, guys like Dougie Miller, that are electrifying, and they could uh, give headaches to this guy, Otto Orr. We saw Doug Miller goal of the half, and, and he ran the length of the arena with his tongue out. You explained again that was a, a Dutch-Pennsylvania greeting. <laughs> well, I don't know if that, that's the case. He just is a very emotional player, and especially on the road. I think he loves to, to play on the road. Uh, in, the, in the Baltimore series, he got uh, uh, three goals in Baltimore, and he loves to do celebrations. He loves to just run all over the place, but that's just a part of his energy. He gets it going with his legs, his arms, and we saw with his tongue in the first half. This is a guy, Hector Marinero, that uh, he knows that uh, he wants to win a championship before his indoor days are over. He's still got some life left in him, and he wants to come up with a strong second half and continue what uh, Cleveland has uh, built the foundation on after 30 minutes of soccer. Cleveland 10, Harrisburg 7, as we are ready to start the third quarter. That Cleveland Crunch team ended the hottest team in the NPSL, 8-1 and one over their last nine games. Ottawa, their goalkeeper, won his last six in the nets. They lost in Buffalo in the first game of their best-of-three first-round series. They were the only team in the four first-round series to come back from a first-game loss and win. And again, now, just 30 minutes away from a trip to the finals. And the key in that first series for Cleveland, they absolutely took Rudy Pikasinski out of it. And because of that, they were able to. They also slowed down Paul Darty after that first game. And Cleveland came back and played good defense in games two and games three of that series. So, you know, Cleveland still has a job to do here in the second half. They, by no weak means, are all the way through to the finals. They're only uh, up by uh, three points. Richard Chinapu for Harrisburg in white against the red-shirted Cleveland Crunch. And Joe Malia, the Harrisburg goalkeeper. And again, we've yet to see Franklin McIntosh tonight. It doesn't look like he is going to be in the offing for the Heat. Henderson's shot won't go. He chases it down on top of the arc. Scott Henderson over to Danny Kelly, who works against the great, skillful defender George Fernandez. Miller, who's been red hot for Harrisburg tonight, tries to force it through, can't get a shot. I guess you'd say, with McIntosh, it's only in an emergency will he play. And if the score holds like this to the fourth quarter, I think it's safe to see it being an emergency then. Well, it certainly would. I mean, this is an emergency game for the Harrisburg Heat, so he really has to be hurting because he's a gamer. Tommy Tanner. The ball caught between his legs. Scott Henderson will just shield him and play it to Malia. And you see to the left of Malia, Richard Chinapo. He has just been the rock back on defense tonight for Harrisburg. Lee to Chandrette. Back to Abe Lilly. Passes back to Richard Chinapu, who will be asked to come forward and score in this second half for Harrisburg. Well, he's got a carriage like leg. John Abe doesn't have a shot. It's Medved shadowing him. Sean Medved. Now to Chandrette again. John Abe. Shot blocked into the crowd, taken by Lilly. And Harrisburg now with a good goal scoring chance. Well, they get a set piece here, and they have to take advantage of it. And I think you want to look for Richard Chinapu, number seven for the Harrisburg Heat. He's hanging around uh, beyond the yellow line, and, and uh, you know he's a guy you have to look for in a set piece like this because he has got that leg and also has the experience and the vision. Good at reading defenses. See Chinapu waving to his goalkeeper, Malia, behind his back. Come up, come up, come up. We're going to attack. It's a no nope, block by Carbonara. Thomas on defense sends the ball to midfield. And again, Chinapu hustles in to keep it alive for Harrisburg. Betcher. Carbonara stays right with him and dumps it back toward the Harrisburg third. And there's Richard Chinapu again getting the pressure from the lobby. But so far, Harrisburg has looked strong in the early going. They've been able to keep the ball possession and uh, really have had the better part of the play for the opening two minutes. And this is what Jim Pollahan wants. And a dangerous line change, though. <laughs> My goodness gracious. Richard Chittabo getting cool breeze. He did not look flustered at all, but it was a good thing Angelo Penzetta 
you know, jumped onto the carpet. Otherwise, it could have been trouble for Cleveland or trouble for Harrisburg. To Shandrett's shot is blocked. Lead to Shandrett. Went overseas to play. Went to Italy for the first half of the season. When he came back, he played the second half. He may be the cog. They were 13-3 and three with him in the lineup. He missed that eight-game slump early. Hey, how about how about this? This isn't how a coach scripts a line change, is it? All right, Richard says, look, Angelo, you take it. It's, it's that simple. You got a lobby charging 30 miles an hour. What's the big deal? But you saw the expression of Richard Chittabu's face. He just never gets flustered. I think Angelo will say to him later on, I mean, can you give me a break there? A lobby was coming. Otto Orff, 25 and 8. Not a bad record in the regular season. Holds the ball outside his yellow line. Harrisburg isn't pressuring. He's not in any hurry. His team's ahead. One of the few guys also wears the initials on the back of his jersey as well. And or double zero. Double O, perhaps. Now he goes for Marinero, and Abel headed back to midfield. Cleveland unable to solve the Harrisburg defense. John Abe runs onto the ball in the right corner. Danny Kelly coming through. Panzetti has one already tonight. Nope, cleared into the crowd by Medved. It'll be a restart on top of the arc. Another dangerous chance for Harrisburg. Well, Harrisburg's getting a set piece from the, the top of the arc, and it's you know they've got to start finishing something. They, they've had some uh, opportunities they missed in the first half of play, but again, they're only down by three points. They've held together so far. They've played a good, clean game. And look who's out there, Franklin McIntosh, to take this from the top of the arc. So uh, maybe his ankle... Yeah, you know, he realizes, hey, I may be hurting, but this is crunch time, if you, if you pardon the pun, for the Harrisburg Heat. Franklin McIntosh plays the ball in the corner. They don't get a shot out of him. See if McIntosh goes off or stays on. He's going to go right back for the bench. Yeah, very gingerly, too. It doesn't look like he had a good stride as he ran off the bench. So he was just on for that set piece. He was a third-team all-league pick this year. What a season. 56 goals, 51 assists, 157 points. Easily the top score in the playoffs for Harrisburg, but that may be all we see of him tonight. McIntosh not breaking a sweat yet tonight. I mean, it's tough for him. A guy like him, it's tough for him to have to sit on the bench. Chinapu follows his own shot. Timo will knock it out. Here comes Cleveland's counterattack, Marinero and Mark Thomas. And Scott Henderson oh, and He away. came up big there to intercept that because it was two on one and Thomas was already right in the real estate he wanted to be to fire a shot off. And there we go, Chinapu, another handoff to Angelo Panzetta. And you know, Chinapu does that like you know, a waiter escorting you to his table. I mean, he just is very calm and cool. Panzetta crosses midfield. Bob Lilly. And now Cleveland is the team that gets back and packs it in defensively in front of Otto Orr. Well, Cleveland's done a good job on defense here because Harrisburg has had the opportunities in the early going of the second half, but Cleveland is getting back. And I think, you know, they sense a chance to have victory and wrap up this series, but they've got to play smart soccer, and often smart soccer begins on defense. With a lucky break off the glass, here comes Tommy Tanner to midfield. Panzetta knocks him down. No call. In the middle of a sandwich, Cleveland comes out with the ball. A whistle that wasn't. <laughs> Marinero to Carrich, left foot won't go. And Lee Tushanarek gets it into Malia. Joe Malia fires as far as he can, overshoots pro. The ball goes out of bounds, and that means it comes back to the spot from whence it came. When you look at this activity at midfield, this is Panzetta and Tanner going at it. There's no whistle, so the ball is loose. And how'd you like to be Tommy Tanner in between John Poe and Angelo Panzetta? And a little white and red uh, and blue cylinder that's uh, a pretty hot item tonight here in Cleveland. Carriage puts the ball down on top of the arc. Two goals, two assists already for Carriage. Marinero with two goals on the night. And this is an absolute nightmare for Harrisburg because they've already faced this a few times tonight. They go instead on the right side to Joe Pavlik. And I think Harrisburg's eternally grateful for that decision. I think the Malia would rather face a Joe Pavlik shot than a Carrot shot, with all due respects to Joe Pavlik. Pavlik has a playoff goal after scoring but seven in the regular season. Lilly in the right corner. Pavlik's been around. He played with the Kalamazoo Kangaroos in the NPSL. With a name like that, how can you go wrong? Carrot, can he control it? No, Malia's getting it. 
Read the trivia book on the players. That's not a name you forget easily. Nine minutes left to go in the third quarter. Miller goes down, foul on Cleveland. Now, I think George Fernandez liked that over again. He didn't need to push Miller. Next week, game one of the finals. Abe's shot turned aside by Doerr. It will definitely be on next Sunday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Could it be Cleveland? If they get through in a hurry, it could even be game two of that best of five championship series. Or Harrisburg could force it to be game one. I was just going to say, don't start making predictions. It's still too early here in the third quarter. And I tell you, the way these playoffs have worked out, I'm ready to just keep calling games until June because we've seen some great scenarios, some intense battles, and some good soccer. Kansas City and St. Louis now underway in Kansas City. We'll be keeping you up to date on that score this evening. And here, of course, Cleveland and Harrisburg. The Kansas City-St. Louis series tied at one game apiece. It definitely ends tonight. Now, how's that for work? Well, we tell you we'll keep you up to date. St. Louis on top of 2 nothing, and that's uh, what you call lightning facts <laughs> of NPSL information. So St. Louis off to that early lead in Kansas City. And, uh, uh, again, that's been a tough series to predict, and the two great rival cities in indoor soccer. Producer George Varis, take a bow. You make us look very good. Here comes John Pro for Harrisburg. Left corner penalty area. Or stands his ground. Marinero and Scott Henderson. Henderson takes the ball away. Cleveland wanted the call to be that Harrisburg played it back in their own defensive third. They don't get it. Panzette into the crowd. He's upset. Yeah, frustration there as he kicks it away and gets Cleveland the ball back. I mean, uh, so far we've had an interesting second half, and uh, it's hard to say which way this second half is going to go because both teams have had opportunities. No scoring yet in the second half. Cleveland getting closer to advancing to the championship series. Fees and MasterCard accepted. Allow four to six weeks delivery. These cards are a kick. Welcome back. Game two of the NPSL's American Division Finals. Cleveland in front. And Cleveland Crunch owner George Hoffman, the man that makes this franchise go very active here in the Cleveland community, keeping this soccer team going. And Dr. Rex Herbert, I mean, a great story in Harrisburg. Uh, he's turning that into a major market uh, success story, a medium market success story, I should say. But two great owners because they're very active in the running of their franchises. Backing in. Tanner can't get it through to Carriage. George Hoffman, the Cleveland owner, was walking through the Cleveland locker room before the game with a cigar lit. You should have seen Gary Henley's eyes when I asked him, was that a victory cigar? You know, like coaches are superstitious. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, that was, that was the, uh, the smoke in his eyes, uh, Henley's eyes. His <laughs> eyes were watering from George's cigar. My eyes were watering. <laughs> but there's no smoking in the arena, and George Hoffman wisely observing the laws here tonight at the CSU Convocation Center. Speaking of some famous cigar smokers. Well, we have a commissioner and our producer, George Barris. Big time cigar smoker. I, I was thinking about our commissioner, Steve Paxos. Haven't seen him. McIntosh going to try again with a set piece. On top of the arc. No, no, now they're in trouble. McIntosh has got a bad wheel and he just gets back to keep the ball away. Yeah, that's not the guy you want when it's numbers down. No. He's staying on the look. Franklin McIntosh, and now we've got our first altercation of the night, John Abe and Tim Tima and this going is a at it. Very mild game. That literally is the first uh, you know, uprising we've had tonight between Tima and Abe, but it's, it's all back to common normal because a lot is on the line here tonight. We've got a whistle and a hold called. Did, did, did we say where is Steve Paxos? <laughs> He's working tonight. We got him. Let <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, all the numbers you see on the screen tonight, Steve Paxos meticulously typing into the computer. He's at work tonight in the truck. What other commissioner in pro sports will do that for you? It's the best seat in the house. He gets to see seven angles at once. Of course, so was Kelly after he took that elbow from Carriage earlier in the game. The show's starting to become like David Letterman as we're going into the, uh, the truck. Uh, maybe we'll go to the parking lot next. <laughs> Orf hustling back. Sending the ball toward the goal is Lilly, but he's way off target. If we do go to the parking lot, I saw a great pretzel corner, a uh, pretzel bender on the corner of Carnegie and 22nd. We could go to. Next Sunday night, you'll see either game one or game two of the championship series. Will it be Cleveland? 
if they hang on, if Harrisburg wins, they force a game three Wednesday. They'll advance to meet either Kansas City or St. Louis. St. Louis trying to steal two in KC. It'll be right here on Sports Channel America. Rich, Liz, and Ken have already mapped out the couch for next week. In fact, they're probably on the couch tonight since apparently they're not here. <laughs> Fernandez into the crowd. Harrisburg, again, look at the third quarter numbers, continuing to have a huge advantage in the shots, but not the shots that go in. Well, that, what it's all about here, I mean, Cleveland is getting back on defense, they're staying back on defense, and consequently, they're not expending a lot of energy. As for Harrisburg, well, they're getting the, the shots off, but it's a bit deceiving. It, it's not been high percentage shots. They've taken a lot of shots from the outside, and with Cleveland back on defense, and then as your last line of the defense, a guy named Otto Orr, it's going to be hard to get it into the net. Slide tackle Fernandez at midfield. Again, Cleveland on the counterattack. A lobby shot won't go. Thomas followed it into the crowd. A lobby, Thomas. Both had big games last night. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, is it going to make it? Wait, I tell you what, that's a future out of war. It's got an auto war farm. farm. Nice toss. You know, you, you hold Carriage and Marinero down like Harrisburg did last night. You think you're going to beat Cleveland, but it was Thomas, a lobby, a couple of guys. Now look at this, he's looking for George Hoffman. He wants to sign a contract. He says, look, George, you know, you, Bill Andracki's a good backup keeper. What about a third stringer? I'm a developmental player. And the moral is? I, I tell you what, I don't think his friend believes him. And Hoffman doesn't believe it either. He's, he's probably going to send a scout over to check on that kid. Off the high glass here in Cleveland. Pro almost got his second with playoffs. Great hustle. Kelly keeps it alive for Harrisburg. And Kelly is down. That's the last thing Harrisburg needs. Kelly. As the ball knocked away, cleared out. We look at Harrisburg again trying to pressure. The ball gets into the box. And now Orff will lunge to his right. The ricochet off the boards. And now Orff is going to make a lunge for it. And Kelly comes running through. And I think he twists something. But he apparently is OK. But uh, Cleveland you know, facing them, some threats by Harrisburg. But Harrisburg just a little bit off in the finishing. And they've got to, I think, pinch a goal here. Uh, in the third quarter, and you see Danny Kelly go off. I mean, I think he'll be able to shake it off, but this Harrisburg team has just been riddled with injuries. Abe shot is into the crowd. All right, you're, you're two sturdy defenders. Todd Smith and Dennis Hamlet aren't here. You're missing Franklin Mark McIntosh Mark with 157 Lissick. points. Your only guy, other guy on the team over 100 points in the regular season was Danny Kelly. Danny, and, he's, and he, again, leading scorer, 16 points in the playoffs uh, for the Harrisburg Heat. So now he is he's on the bench. But I think whatever it was, he's going to be able to come back on. You know, we even saw Franklin McIntosh back off for that sequence. I mean, he may, it may be gut check time soon for Franklin McIntosh. We don't know the extent of the injury. We know it's been enough to keep him out of the game for the most part uh, into this third quarter. We near five minutes to play in the third. Cleveland by three. One long shot from outside the yellow line for Harrisburg could still tie this game. They're very much in it. Well, it's a tight game right now. Very tight game. You know, Gary Henley, by no means, and the Cleveland team cannot be relaxing. You know, now Harrisburg draws a foul as Tashantret goes down. And then, with the, the knee brace, of course. I mean, the, you know, you see the replay of the intensity there. Schlotthauer gets a late challenge in on uh, Tashantret, and that's why Schlotthauer is unhappy. But I think it was a good call on the part of the official. Miller. What a night he's having, and he just missed there. The follow won't go. By Bill Betcher. Alavi gets a step on Shinapu. And that's the thing about Chinabu. He may give a step, but he always gets it back. Carbonara off the boards. Knocked down by Chinapu, covered by Malia. A three-point lead. How safe is it? Ask Wichita, watching the game at home tonight instead of playing. They had, with nine seconds left, a three-point lead in St. Louis. One shot's all it takes. And St. Louis knocked him out of the playoffs. Well, Harrisburg is getting that one shot, but they're just not finishing it right now. They've got to do it. They just had two opportunities. Went down at the other end of the floor and, and uh, came away with nothing. And, and sooner or later, that's going to trigger Cleveland's counterattack if you don't finish the chances. Otto Orff wants to go long. Speaking of which, here's Karich. Now nope, Chinapu's back with him. Marinero keeps it alive. Karich in front of the goal for Hector, blocked by Chinapu. Which yeah. Chinapu is just doing at both ends right now. They're asking him to do so much on defense. I'll tell you what, he looks like he's 25 and not 35 tonight. He's played a wonderful game. To Shant Red. Up high to Panzetta. Danny Kelly is back on. He's on the left side of your screen. Ooh. Abe takes a nice shot. 
Good hustle from Tim Tima. Then after the ball was kicked away, he's guilty of the foul. Hey, watch uh, Doug Miller. He's had some great opportunities tonight, also a goal tonight, but this one is going to go off the woodwork, and that's not by much. And then a follow-up shot by Harrisburg also missed. Sooner or later, though, Harrisburg knows they, they can't get down, but you have to finish that. And, and perhaps they're a little bit antsy at this point. They, they may feel the pressure a little bit, and they're finishing just off by a few inches. The ball hit Marinero in front of the goal and bounced out of play. Harrisburg's restart will come on top of the arc. And they trail by three, 320 to go in the third. And look who's coming on. You've got Chinapu, of course, to take the set piece, and Four, McIntosh three, as well. So they need some legs out there to do, you know, great finishers to fire off some good shots. And that's what they need right now. Chinapu will start it off. That is McIntosh to his left. Is he a decoy? No, he's going to shoot. Just missed it wide left. And he will hustle back again. Chinapu in front, knocked away. Chinapu's got to hustle down. Marinero, oh, they got a foul at midfield. Tanner pulled down, just a foul. Cleveland I'll tell you what, upset that it wasn't two minutes that, again. That was close because what was happening there, for some reason, McIntosh, see, Tashantra knows that uh, his defenders are not back, so the jersey tug, that stops the breakaway, and that's the kind of call that could lead to a shootout and a two-minute penalty. In this case, it doesn't, but for whatever reason, you know, Harrisburg a little bit lucky here because McIntosh stayed on the carpet. And that, you know, with his bum ankle, he cannot get back that quickly. So Tashantra did what he had to do. Although it could have cost Harrisburg a shootout. Instead, Harrisburg has the ball. We told you Tashantra's nickname is Beetlejuice because of his unique appearance. There is Bart Simpson. Everything you ever wanted to know about Lee Tashantra. Panzetta is there on the line to knock away a ball that got by Malia. No. Well, you know, we talked about no scoring in the third quarter. And sooner or later, usually the dam breaks for Cleveland. And this starts on a set piece. Marinero at the doorstep. And he's like radar. When he's in tight, he, he can't beat him. Harrisburg held him out last night. Both Carriage and Marinero with seven points tonight. What will be the best investments? Not satisfied, we'll gladly refund your money. Hector Marinero's goal puts Cleveland in front by five with 2.33 to go in the quarter. Wait, look at this goal for Hector Marinero. I mean, this guy, as what you call it, knows for the goal. He's right in tight. That's just classic finishing. You have to get the shot off because Deshantre was right on his heels. And Marinero, the virtuoso, just uh, arms extended in the celebration. He's a classic finisher. Seven points tonight on, on three goals. And when he's left alone right there, first of all, it's to his credit that he gets open in close like that. But then he's got to get the shot off before any defender closes in on him. And he is great at doing that. He did that 100 times, an unprecedented 100 times during the regular season. Good crowd here on Easter Sunday in Cleveland. And, uh, you know, they sense victory. Cleveland up by five. But... I've seen this Harrisburg Heat team enough this year to literally never count them out because it's a team that does stay together and doesn't get down. You saw Hector's records. What's even more remarkable is the fact that he just didn't set records. He obliterated them. Yeah, but let's see what he does for an encore next year. I mean, let's see what he's really made of. <laughs> Bob Lilly down the left boards. He's not having a bad playoff, obviously. Chinapu wide to the right. Cleveland wants to counterattack. Carbonero rolls it for Mark Thomas. Thomas still coming in the corner. Malia. Dangerous situation, yep. but Harrisburg's able to get it out. Richard Chinapu. Medved just turns the corner, knocks it away. Three on two if Cleveland hurries. Nope. Harrisburg's got the white shirts back now. Pro gets to the ball before a lobby in the corner. Ball hits Medved and pops. Out of play. It belongs to Harrisburg. If Harrisburg wins, they force a deciding game three on Wednesday night. If Cleveland wins, they advance to meet the winner of St. Louis and Kansas City. Game one of that series, or maybe even game two, one week from tonight, next Sunday, 8 o'clock, here on Sports Channel America. He wants to be there. Hector's thinking about playoffs, but he also knows that there's still a quarter and some change left to go, and, and uh, that's a long time against the Harrisburg E team. Foul, again on to Chandra, as Tima goes down. Or, I'm sorry, let's make it the other way, obviously. The ball's not quickly out by Cleveland. Harrisburg tried to get a quick restart before Cleveland could set themselves, but it didn't work. Uh, 
Thomas goes down on the boards, pushed by Betcher. Well, they got tangled up, and uh, Betcher getting the worst end of that. It'll be a free kick coming up for the uh, Cleveland Clutch. I mean, you know, Harrisburg just has to maintain the composure and keep trying the chances. Uh, you know, Betcher, you know, he's not afraid to challenge anybody on the boards, and there he just uh, wraps up Mark Thomas. You talked at halftime about what a clean game it's been tonight. Last night it was anything but. Well, it's basically a bit of a war, especially in the, the second half. But uh, tonight both playing clean soccer. And I think a lot of that has to do with this uh, is a deciding game in many respects for both teams. I mean, Cleveland does not want to see this go to three because then Harrisburg gets some of the players back. And as for Harrisburg, well, it's no choice. You have, you have to win or it's back for summer camps. Timo on top of the arc. Carriage, Medved. They work the ball over to the SEMA lobby. Off the boards, no one there to finish. Oh, Malia had to pop it away. He's met that almost got there to knock it in. Bodies collide at midfield. Down goes Fernandez. Well, you also have to credit Tim, uh, Tim Team and the rest of the Cleveland defense. I mean, they have been challenged here in this third quarter, and they've come up strong. You look at that collision, and from five feet in the air, how's it feel to land on Astrocur? Team back to midfield. Miller streaks under it. Miller. As a long one caught by Orth. Miller's been the guy tonight. A goal and two assists for Harrisburg. Yeah, but he, got, he doesn't have a shot like Zorn Carrick, so he's, he's better off taking one on the fly when he's got a breakaway or something in tight. And I think uh, Dougie knows that uh, that's not the shot he wants. Gary Henley, the coach of the, the Cleveland Clutch. And you know, yeah, he's got Hector Marinero, Zorn Carrick, but he's had the difficult task this year of, you know, keeping the team defensively strong with that great offense and also keeping everyone happy on a team that's got some stars. Seven seconds left in the quarter. Cleveland trying to drive a nail in the Harrisburg coffin if they could score here. Good defense, good solid wall by Harrisburg. And Miller sits on the length of the floor and almost got it in. And that's happened before. They've scored on that one before. And it was actually a good play on the part of Doug Miller. It would have really been an exclamation point for Harrisburg, but now they're still down by five. Cleveland, 15 minutes away from advancing to the championship. Now for more information and money-saving coupons. Only one goal in the third quarter, and it moves Cleveland closer to that American Division Championship. And this is how it happens. Zoran Carrots, look at that. I mean, that a great feed off the board. Yes, indeed. Good night. It's in the net. Hector Marinero. I mean, these two know how to work with each other. They know how to use the boards. You know, they've been together long enough on an indoor carpet, and now they're only 15 minutes away from the American Division uh, you know, title, and they go on to face the winner of that St. Louis-Kansas City matchup. And, uh, no, Gary Hindley, for him, there's no let-up in intensity. And this crowd, I mean, they've been treated to every kind of music tonight. We have the beer barrel polka in between the third and fourth quarter. But now it's intense time. The music's going to go up. The crowd's going to go up. And Hector Marinero is going to just send this crowd into a frenzy when he sends that ball up. Because, believe me, a lot of the young fans, they want to catch a ball from one of their favorite players, Medved or Hector Marinero. Good grab again, although I think they ended up dropping it. But a good crowd on Easter Sunday, believe me, they're into this. And one week should be. One week from tonight, the finals. American, 48, National 36. That was the head-to-head -head matchup. Is the American pretty well dominated play between the two? Will it make Cleveland the favorite? Well, let's get through this one before we worry about that. And you look at the shots again. Harrisburg putting on the pressure. They, they had some chances where, you know, that 14 by eight, by eight net was open, but they just couldn't put it in, and it was hitting woodwork. And so Harrisburg consequently comes in five points down into the fourth quarter, but it's a long 15 minutes if you're Cleveland. 24 penalty minutes, three separate times last night. Two players sent off for fighting tonight. It's just been intense and hard. Harrisburg has to make up five points here in the fourth quarter. Kelly's pass sent on goal but knocked away. Cleveland again playing back with Carriage as the cherry picker trying to get him the ball. Pro makes a nice turn to get by Marinero. A great defense on Chinabu. He swept that off the yellow line. Doug Miller, Harrisburg's big scorer tonight. To Richard Chinabu outside the yellow line. That's a three-point shot. Bro can't knock it in. Carriage out to midfield. Whistle stops action. Now 
call a foul on Cleveland. Well, Harrisburg is putting the pressure on, but Richard Chinapu is still able to drop back, but that's what they've got to do in the, in the remaining part of the fourth quarter. I mean, obviously, you cannot sit back on defense. Kelly takes a shot to Tanner blocks. Now he'll come up and get it at midfield. It will bounce and roll into Otto Orff, the Cleveland goalkeeper. He's looking for Hector Marinero, his 100-goal scorer. Again, Harrisburg just keeps scrapping on defense. Now they're scrapping now. Sean Medvick gets called for foul on uh, Doug Miller. And uh, that's a good call because Miller with that speed, uh, it could have been a different story if he could have gotten up the field and really been on a counterattack. Bill Betcher makes a nice move on top of the arc. Tried to leave it for Chishan Red. Nope. Lobby, Lobby will be called. He'll get called for the jersey tugging on Bill Betcher. But Betcher, I'll tell you what, he had a Sean great shot off, and unfortunately right? couldn't get it off. You look at Medvid here, right, challenges right, Miller. Now Betcher loses control of the ball and a lobby just dumps him. So now another free kick, another set piece coming up for the Harrisburg Heat. Cleveland, physical team, but a smart team too. Those are good professional good, fouls. Good fouls because Betcher, if he can find the trigger, you know, it's a great opportunity and it's a nightmare for Otto Orr. Richard Chinapu on the restart to Abe. His left foot won't go. Betcher tries to get it home. That bet was right in his face. Yep. Now Cleveland's played a, a real good defensive game. Chinapu for Tishan Red, knocked away by Medford. And finally, Cleveland will have a chance to clear. They extend that point a real strong second half on defense for Cleveland. Now 13-10 left to go, perhaps, in Harrisburg season. Look no further than the scoreboard. Harrisburg yet to uh, get a goal here in the second half of play. Tishan Red in the right corner. Again, Cleveland. Yeah. Well, three red shirts back. I mean, Tashantra gets the ricochet off the boards, but no one is able to get in the middle of the box. And that ricochet is the pass to Cleveland unless you can get somebody there. Medved on top of the arc. Carriage dishes to Alave. Wide to the right. Well, traditionally in the playoffs, the scores go down. That really hasn't been the well, case this year. In the NPSL, you've seen some wild high-scoring games. But here, especially in the second half. I think, and especially when you get in critical games like this, you will see the score go down because so much is on the line. Teams are not going to take as many chances as they may in a game one situation. Henderson, Scott Henderson just missed. Betcher's follow is also wide. I, I feel for Harrisburg because they've had some great opportunities tonight. And it's just a shame the finishing is not there. Betcher fights with Tanner on the boards, comes out with the ball. John Abe, can he roll it free? He does. Miller sets up, his right foot is saved by Orr. Miller keeps hustling after it in the corner. Abe doesn't have a shot, Carbonara gets it into Orr. I tell you, you know, this Harrisburg team, perpetual motion, they keep digging, keep digging, but, you know, it's Prince and Cleveland because it's tough to play a team like that. Carriage finds Tanner! Oh, too high. Here it's Cleveland 12, Harrisburg 7. Cleveland wins. They advance to the finals. Harrisburg trying to force a game three Wednesday night. What's going on in Kansas City? 6-6 six, six in the second. Again, tight game there. You know, and that's what you're going to see when it gets to be, you know, a deciding game, I think, in any series because there's so many good teams in this playoffs and so many good, strong defensive teams. Harrisburg's ball. Joe Malia, their goalkeeper, will throw it to another one of his white jerseys. Now he will hustle it across the yellow line, try to set the offense in motion. Doug Miller. A goal and two assists. Carbonara is there to knock it away. Harrisburg gets it right back. Kelly's three! It's good! And they're back within a regular two-point goal! What a huge goal for Danny Kelly. Well, you talk about getting exactly what you need. Harrisburg, that's made to order. That's room service. And Danny Kelly, you know, a 55-foot shot on the half foul. You'll see it here. He tees this one up. And Walt Schlauthauer inadvertently may have blocked Otto Orff's vision. But Kelly is given the room here to fire this one. Again, comes into the game as the Harrisburg Heat's leading playoff score with 16 points. This is great finishing. And finally... Harrisburg is able to penetrate that Cleveland defense and make it a one-goal game, 12 to 10. And this is what it's all about in NPSL soccer. You know, just when you write off the Harrisburg Heat team, just when Cleveland's playing such exceptional defense, a three-pointer goes in. And now whose game is it? I don't know. 
Foul on Lilly. Cleveland ball outside the Harrisburg yellow line. 12-10. The three-pointer from behind the yellow line. The others count two. You know, that's, and that's how things happen. We saw so many opportunities for Harrisburg where they were working, 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 yet all it took was Danny Kelly's three-pointer to make a real game out of this. And that looks so easy. Oh, speaking of easy, <laughs> yes. Carriage comes close. 19 points now in the playoffs for Kelly. He's Harrisburg's leading playoff scorer. Jennifer the other way. Crosses the yellow line. Shot blocked straight up in the air by Hector Marinara. John Pro in the right corner. Tinapu's three is blocked by Hector again. What Harrisburg has to do now is continue to do what they've been doing, create the, continue that work rate, creating opportunities, but maintaining the solid defense. Well deflected back in the Harrisburg third. Lilly should get there first ahead of Carriage. He does. He better. I mean, Ten minutes and change left in this ball game, and this is everything. One goal game. And Danny Kelly out there, who knows? Maybe it's not a one goal game. 10.30 left to go in the fourth quarter. Panzetta dummies the ball through to Bob Lilly. Harrisburg playing for the tie. Miller, now Fernandez will beat him with the ball. It keeps it alive. That's what Harrisburg's all about. Carriage. Swats the ball down with his hand at midfield. Gets away with it. Is he going to leave it for Marinero? Panzetta won't let him. Good defense to the part of Angelo Panzetta. Now here, you know, we got Marinero and Carriage on the carpet. Now this is where the defense has to be strong, and it is. Kelly knocks it away. He gets it right back. Marinero against Lilly. Lilly cheats in and knocks it away. Up to Chandrette at midfield. Against Fernandez. Harrisburg sets their offense. They need a goal to tie. Inside 10 minutes to go in the game. The Shan Red, there's a nice move. He's got a seam. Blocked in front by Fernandez. A step too late on that shot. Long ball to Lobby. He's got great speed, but Henderson stays with him. And that's what Harrisburg's also all about, the great speed. Fingertip saved by Malia. It'll be a corner kick for the Cleveland Crunch. Great effort by Scott Henderson to get back and frustrate that seam Lobby. Otherwise, nine times out of 10, he finishes that. And believe me, Joe Malia felt that one. But Henderson gets back. Of course, he's retreating, so it's tough to play defense. Allows the Lobby to get the shot off. But Malia's able to swat it away, although his hand still feels that. But now you've got the thing you don't want if you're Harrisburg, a corner kick. And you know the big guns like Hector Marinero and company are coming on to conference. So Joe Malia's got a lot to think about. Carriage can score from this spot. He's done it tonight. But if I'm Harrisburg, I've got somebody on 21 way up high up yep. there at the yellow line. Now Carriage tried to push yeah. it through himself again. Now he's got Marinero. Hit the crossbar. Hello, crossbar. That was it. Ball bounces out of play. It belongs to Harrisburg. They got it to him anyway. Yeah, Joe Malia better turn around and touch that crossbar because uh, that was it. Marinero did get the shot off. Joe Malia, cool under pressure, he's got to be because uh, they need him now in the final five minutes of this contest. He's got to come up big, especially with Harrisburg having the pressure. That means Malia probably is going to be left with not as many defenders back as he wants. It's a one-goal game. 9-10 left to go in the fourth quarter. Lead to Chandrette for Take Harrisburg. Him. Harrisburg's winning a lot of the 50-50 balls now, and that's indicative of how they've been able to get back in this game. Betcher tried to slide through for Scott Henderson, a lobby. Can't clear it out. And they're pressuring the ball, forcing bad passes, coming up with interceptions. This is how Harrisburg has gradually worked its way back into this game. I mean, they've had the shot total advantage. They just have not been able to do it on the scoreboard. Maybe Danny Kelly's three-pointer will turn the Heat's fortunes around. To Chandrette, up to Chinnifu again. Boy, it took a huge burden off them of having to force action because now one goal, that's it. And it's a tie game. Yeah. And the effort just tremendous because, again, Harrisburg missing two of their top defenders. And also Franklin McIntosh, their leading scorer, and yet still making a game out of this. And now George Fernandez gets a foul. And again, Cleveland's played good defensively. They did not allow a goal in the second half until the third quarter. But right now, things are not going their way. You see John Fold, the rookie from Evansville, he's going to get pushed by Fernandez and actually uh, you know, helps the referee remake the call there. But that's what you have to do at this stage of the game if you're Harrisburg. You have to get what you can get. Jinnipu comes from Miller, who bangs one off the boards. Mark wants to throw it. The lobby's got the wheels. And he gets by Chinapu. It's loose in front. He's got it. I 
I'll tell you what, this is surprising because Chinapu gambled with no one back and now he had to come out, try to make the sliding tackle, but with a lot of his momentum, he came crunching in. But it really was a surprise. Look at Chinapu gamble. He should have jumped back. Instead, he went right after the ball, did not get it, and Alani comes marching home. And I'm interested to see why Malia couldn't get to the ball there. Well, Malia was late off his line. You see, he comes out. He does not get out. He should have gotten out sooner because no one else is back. And Chinapu is going after a, a lobby, doing what he has to do. But he really maybe took a bit of a gamble there, trying to come up with a big steal. And instead now, you know, Cleveland is up by four points. Not totally Chinapu's fault because, of course, that's the position Harrisburg's in. They were trying to equalize. Cleveland now 7.40 away. And it's a two-goal game again. And Carrich trying to make it a three-goal game. Reading the shot is Malian. Nassim Olavi had a big game last night with five points, and maybe the biggest goal of the evening so far. Miller, hey, good ball, Panzetta, blocked. Oh, hit the groin by Fernandez. Fernandez took that one. You're talking about laying down for your team. Lily off the boards. Marinero's there to clear it out. Panzetta hits a good ball. Now, Harrisburg has been peppering the goal tonight, but it's been Cleveland's defense. Lily won't get it in. That's five shots I've counted. Team of fouled on the boards. Cleveland will keep it. Now look at George Fernandez here. You talk about a defender who will do anything. He's going to go down to try to block it here. And look where he takes that. Yeah. He wants a steak dinner now? No. He's going to feel that one for a while. He's in <laughs> Not funny. That hurts. That's funny if it doesn't happen to you. No. Oh. To Chanteret for Harrisburg and Panzetta. Henderson now up high. They're down two goals, 640 left in their season. A spin move, Betcher. Blocked by Carbonero. Uh, you know, good defense here on Cleveland. Betcher got open, but Carbonero steps up to uh, fill the void. Betcher makes a nice sliding pass in the corner to Chanteret. Can't get it in. Here comes Marinero, two-on-two two break with Carrick. Plays it to Zorin, runs to the corner. Harrisburg defends nicely again. Abe gets it out to Panzetta. Abe can't get it on top of the arc. Here comes their two-on-one break. Olavi with Carrick right. Plays it to Zorin, whose shot is... Knocked down in front. He tried to pass it back in front to a lobby. Garrett gets it again. Blocked by Chinapu. Very intense out there right now. And you should see the battle for the 50-50 ball. Cleveland, you know, they do not want to keep this Harrisburg barrage going. You know, both teams, they're just turning it up now. Because for Cleveland, it's five and a half minutes to a national division meeting with the national division champion. And for Harrisburg, it's now. It's got to be now. Tanner back to midfield. 5.20 to go in the game. Two goals to Cleveland lead. Mark Thomas pushed off. Yep. They caught him. Pushed off on Richard Chittapu. But I tell you what, Richard Chittapu, 36 years old. What a game he's had tonight. Everyone's legs out there. They played last night. They have to be hurting. They have to be sore. But why do they keep coming at the speed they're coming? Because they started this trip back in October, and you just don't feel anything at this point. You're numb. You just have to go all out, lay it on the line, and see what happens. Tanner leads the Cleveland counterattack again. Tries to spin it, but cannot. We'll see Cleveland do this the rest of the game. The game has now gone to the half in Kansas City. That'll Winner of that game advances to the finals. That'll probably go to overtime. Pro shot just missed. That may have been a three-pointer. 14-10 Cleveland here. They are now four and a half minutes away from advancing to the NPSL championships. People expected this at Cleveland at the beginning of the year. They were the coach's pick to win the division. Injuries hurt their record. They're healthy now. Shot in front, Pro! Gets his second of the game. His first two of the playoffs. What a time for the rookie. Amazing here. And again, it's a credit to the work rate of Harrisburg. They get down by one, two goals. They keep coming. Look at Tashantre. Split the defenders. Thread the needle to Poe. It's in the net. Again, uh, Tashantre. Splits the defenders. Look at the needle he's got to thread. And look where Poe is. Bam, it's home. 
unlikely hero, John Prose, pulled Harris Burke back within a goal. 4-22 left to go in the game. First edition, all new Pacific's 19... Ahead of all the others. Jim Pollahan's team is within a goal. They have to win tonight to force a deciding game three in this American Division Championship Series. I'm Dave Phillips. Dave Johnson's our analyst. Stick around after the game. If Cleveland wins, we'll have the celebration. If Harrisburg wins, we have a game three. Uh, you know, it's not over clearly. That's the case right now because Harrisburg, you know, every time we think Cleveland's going to be able to sit back, play good defense, and walk away with this game, you know, Harrisburg comes storming back, and they just keep doing it time and time again, and there's still a lifetime left in soccer. Four minutes and change left in this game, and Harrisburg, they just keep coming back at you. That's, that's what this team is all about. Get to Shanred, save it on the boards, bounces past him. Betcher will run in underneath it. They're a banged-up team. They certainly don't have the superstars Cleveland does, but Betcher comes close to tying it up. Panzetta, score! We are tied! Angelo Panzetta with a rock and roll hair doing a rock and roll town, and Otto Orff is going to be wondering now what is going on here because Harrisburg exploding here in the fourth quarter, and you saw Franklin McIntosh congratulating Panzetta. I mean, this is a page from McIntosh. That's on the volley with the right foot, and not much Otto Orff can do there. Great header by Bill Betcher. Panzetta, the volley inside the post, nips the woodwork, and Otto Orff looks like he was held up. So Panzetta coming up with the uh, big goal, and then he selects the music before the Harrisburg Heat games at home, and right now that's music to Jim Pollahan's ears. It looks a little like Keith Richards, doesn't it? I'll tell you what, Jim Pollahan will let him play music all night long if he scores another goal like that. Tied. Carriage in the corner. Abe knocks it away. Well, your leading scorer, McIntosh, your go-to guy's out. Who do you ask to pick up the slack? Panzetta and Pro. No goals between them heading into tonight's game two. They each have a pair tonight. Yeah, they, it's just been an amazing story tonight with Angelo Panzetta you know, wearing the captain's armband tonight. But again, you know, he's very focused. He's not getting into a celebratory mode because a long way to go, three and a half minutes left. And this Cleveland team, when they get angry, you know, they've got the weapons to just all of a sudden turn it on again. Uh, that's the thing about you, they can turn it on, turn it off. But clearly, you know, Harrisburg has been the challenging team here in the fourth quarter. Lily's shot won't go. Abe's follow is knocked in by Miller. His second of the game. The Pennsylvanians are in front. And Doug Miller celebrating with the Harrisburg Heat Booster Club and made the trip from Pennsylvania's capital city. And Otto Orff's got to go to the back of the net one more time. Well, that's just good work, buddy. Look at this. They're swarming around the goal. Abe nicks it to the post. And Miller is right there. And that's what Miller's game is all about. And look at Angela Panzetta. I mean, they are just now they've got to let loose some steam. And the pressure they've been under, it's time to celebrate a little bit. But the story is not over. But you saw Doug Miller sneaking in under the defense. The speedy guy in the middle, that's what he's all about. And again, when you're missing some of the, uh, the big guns like a Franklin McIntosh, you've got to rely on a guy like Doug Miller. They say in Harrisburg, Doug Miller is the city's heartthrob. He's done nothing to hurt his standing tonight. Two goals, two assists. Let's go to the Harrisburg huddle and Jim Pollahan. That's how we're breaking this game up. We're getting back and we're breaking again. But once it goes behind you, you got to help out. You get that one chance. This one on open net, you got to put it away. Come on, boys. Ready, boys. One, two, three. Let's go. <laughs> well, there's Gary Henley now talking with Isabel, probably about the defensive breakdowns that have occurred. You heard the Harrisburg uh, bench, I mean, Gary Hitley is not happy at all, and he shouldn't be, and now he's going to get on the top stoop. But the Harrisburg bench, there seem to be about five or six coaches there, because at this point, it's it's a very much about playing smart soccer and also emotion. And this Harrisburg team is a team that's playing emotion, but a lot of credit to that guy, because when they were down, we heard him in the huddle, never accusing, just very positive, keeping his team uplifted, and look where they are now. Uh-oh, Karich gets a step on Lilly. Lilly pulls him down. Foul on Lilly. Well, Harrisburg reminds you of a college team, yeah. don't they? The enthusiasm in that huddle, it's beautiful. Well, when, you, you know, when you're missing your big guns, you've got to have enthusiasm. You have to have emotion. That was a smart foul on Bob Lilly. He did what he had to do to harass Zorn Karich, 
without getting called for two minutes in a shootout. Carrots with the ball. Marinero is back at the yellow line. In front. The shot won't go by Fernandez. Oh, it knocked in. Off Chinapu. It hits a Harrisburg defender and goes in. And the game is tied again. Sometimes you'd rather be lucky than good. Well, that's what it's about. This is what uh, this time of year is about. And Harrisburg at this point cannot lose the emotion and enthusiasm because they do a good defensive job. But at this point, they're at sixes and sevens, and Richard Chittapu cannot get out of the way. Because here now, Harrisburg just has to react after the shot. They're scrambling around, and Richard Chittapu trying to get out of the way of that the ball, and now he can't believe it, and he looks like he was shot. And I'm sure that's the way he feels right now, but he can't let up. It's a tie ball game. Three goals, three assists on the night for Zoran Carriage. That's nine points. The record is 11, so another goal, and Carriage will tie a record. That's something Cleveland's been very familiar with. We'll see if Harrisburg, a team that's shown so much great heart and grit this year, can fight through this one. We're tied with 2.30 to go in the game. I'll tell you what, Harrisburg on the bus ride here to Cleveland, they must have watched the movie Rocky three or four times because that's the kind of effort they're given tonight. Talk about Rocky one, that is. <laughs> jumps through on the boards on top of the arc. His oh. shot just sailed wide to the right. And Miller is down at the other end of the field, and we're going to have an injury timeout. Miller is clutching the knee, and, you know, that's the last thing Harrisburg needs is another injury. They're going to have to hire another trainer. Miller, two goals, two assists tonight as Harrisburg is even... Look at the replay. Him. I mean, he's going to get a shot off here, and now his uh, legs get caught up with George Fernandez. They buckle under, and he goes down in pain. Being examined by the trainer, Jim Pollard and the coach right out there. Saying, Doug, are you all right? I'm running out of guys here. You're going to have to shoot the trainer up. That's right, let's go, let's go. Two goals, six points. I mean, everything that Jim Pollard asked of Doug Miller, he's done tonight. Again, they've had the, the Doug Miller stepping up. Angelo Panzetta getting into the score. And, you know, everybody on this Harrisburg team has had to do something, especially with the absence of Franklin McIntosh. One week from tonight, that's right, next Sunday, will it be Cleveland? Harrisburg's doing all they can to make sure they'll be the American representative. You'll watch the championship series as the American and National square off. Cleveland or Harrisburg against Kansas City or St. Louis, who are tied in their deciding game three tonight, being played in Kansas City. Two all five left in the game. We're tied in Cleveland. A free back-to-back. -back. this number now and get your free back-to-back -back home run. Doug Miller's having a tremendous night for Harrisburg. Craig Sherrick, the heat trainer, has taken a look at the leg, and it doesn't look good early. No, when, it, when you start looking like that, and there's a, you know, a, definitely a serious examination. They're not trying to work out a cramp or something here. You know, Doug Miller may have to miss the remaining uh, couple of minutes of this game, and Harrisburg certainly needs them. They need all the bodies they can get. Harrisburg in the white. John A. Bounces one off the boards. Who's there to follow? To Shan Red scores! Oh, These guys will not die. And, you know, it's an amazing story because you just saw Doug Miller, a guy with six points, go off the carpet. But then DeShantred, who's been working so hard again, DeShantred, a player very much like a Doug Miller, who gets inside, harasses the defense, and look where he is. He gets the open spot, and he finishes this one. You get the impression right now, Harrisburg, which a team that missed opportunities earlier on, they're not going to miss these now. They're going to finish them. And Otto Orff is reeling. <laughs> Earlier I said they're like a college team. Whether you're a Cleveland or a Harrisburg fan, America loves the underdog, and these guys, well, like even, even Miller's up now. No, I mean, they're, they're winning our hearts tonight because we, you know, we look at the, how many players they have left. I mean, they barely have enough to field a basketball team, it seems, yet they keep coming back against all odds, and that's why you know a little bit of your heart goes for you, and now Hector Marinero is in as the sixth attack with a man of 46 left. Cleveland pulls the goalkeeper. He gives them a numbers edge. They have an extra man out, and the ball rolls right into the goal. Count it. We're tied. That didn't take any time at all. I don't know if rolls is the word. There was a scrum. This is one 
it'll be discussed for a while. All right, let's look at this. The initial shot, it goes in tight. Malia's down. Chinapu on defense. We got bodies flying everywhere. Loose ball. No whistle, so it's still alive. It's poked home, and it's definitely over. That's Mark Thomas who pokes it home. I understand Harrisburg's frustration, but what are you going to call here? Yep. Well, you can almost call holding on Richard Chinapu. Well, they give it to Tanner, but I, it looked like on the replay that Thomas was actually the one that finally po poked it home. Let's look at this close. Tanner's right there. Or that's Tanner with his shot. Chinaboo takes him down, and you see Thomas nuggling it in. I think Thomas may have gotten the goal, but uh, and again, right now it goes to Tanner. Either way, we have a tie game again. 120 left to go. Carriage on top of the arc. Looks like pretty sound defense yeah. for Lilly, but that was a whistle a foul. That was a good sliding tackle on Bob Lilly. And now he gets the foul, so now a set piece for the Cleveland Crunch. And this is when they're the script. I don't want this back in the goal. We have an even game. You look at the foul. This is Lilly step for step. Goes after the ball, but he's going to trip up Carriage. It was a good call. We got a free kick just above the yard coming up for Cleveland. Cleveland. 116 left in the game, tied. If they win, they go to the NPSL Championships. Carriage, nine points on the night, two off the NPSL record. Marinero's shot is blocked. And set up fighting against Carriage. Who should get there first? He does for Harrisburg. John Abe at midfield. Harrisburg in the white. You see the time. We're tied. It's game two of the best of three American Division finals. Cleveland up one game to none. Fetcher for Harrisburg. Medved gets by. Abe was the man who took the ball away. 15 seconds left in the game. We're tied. Overtime, if you're wondering, we play sudden death. Carriage for Marinara with five seconds. Block back to midfield, and overtime is exactly what we'll play. First team to score wins. Harris were playing for their lives. Cleveland playing to go to the finals. Overtime coming up here in Cleveland. What more can Jim Hollihan ask from his Harrisburg team tonight? Well, they just have to keep doing what they've been doing, and that's uh, the, the, the simple answer because they've been creating opportunities, they've been working very hard, it's been that work rate that's been the key tonight. At any point, Harrisburg could have packed it in, but they did not, and they've kept the intensity up. They've never gotten down, no matter how many times they've fallen behind. Here's the goal that tied the game for Cleveland. Well, you look at this. I mean, this is going to be intensity in the box. Tommy Tanner positioning for the pass. Tanner's going to get, try to get the shot up. Chinapu is right there. Now they're both going to go down. I mean, that's even Steven action. Mark Thomas right there. There's no whistle, and he puts it over the line. It turns out to be Mark Thomas's goal. Is that a good goal? It certainly was. It counted. Barry Henley now talking to his troops, saying, all right, we got overtime. We had some defensive lapses. But I think he's got to say, look, you know, this is sudden death, and the way things have been going for Harrisburg tonight, Harrisburg is a team that is certainly primed and ready for sudden death because Harrisburg has been pinching the goals when they need them. In the National Division Finals being contested tonight in Kansas City, Kansas City went into St. Louis and took a huge 1-0 lead. Well, you know, Kansas City, the situation there, that's a team that when they're off on defense, they can really be off, and that's what happened in Game 2. As for Game 3, well, let's see what's happening tonight in Kansas City at the Kemper Arena. Kansas City up 10-6. I just said that when Kansas City is bad on defense, they can really be bad, but it looks like tonight they are good. Overtime has favored the underdogs. Only two games this year have gone to OT in the playoffs. St. Louis, the fourth seed. In the National Division, won both against top seed Wichita. Will the form hold? Fourth seed Harrisburg. And Dougie Miller is out there. 
He's going to be kicking it off for the Harrisburg Heat. You look at his left leg, he's got a bandage around that left leg, but he's going to play. Who knows, maybe McIntosh will come out. The same lobby for Cleveland in the red. If they win, they win the series. Kelly will hustle back and get it to Malia. And most of the fans are standing here in Cleveland. I don't know how they can sit down because it's been that kind of game. I think many of the fans at some points felt confident. I mean, Cleveland definitely seemed to be in control of this game. But Harrisburg is a time, type of team that can, you know, erase your confidence, erode that confidence. But they've got to play smart soccer. As the ball goes out of play, Cleveland will put their big guns out. All NPSL first teamers, Zoran Karic and Hector Marinero. 15 minutes was put on the clock. It doesn't matter. First team to score wins. If they don't score in 15 minutes, that puts some more time up. I got a flight tomorrow morning, and the way this game is going, that could be in jeopardy. Hey. Hey. Karic is the target man in front of the goal. Marinero, number 21, the MVP in the league, gets it to him. He tries to come back. He can't. Solid defense. Harrisburg again. To Chantret, Panzetta to his right, Pro to his left. And that was Scott Henderson. He was all over Zoran Karic. He was, it was practically a part of Zoran Karic, and that's what you're going to have to do. Don't let him get that turn. To Chantret at the yellow line. Scott Henderson, that's Richard Chinapu, Danny Kelly up high. Cleveland has Tim Tima 17, Zoran Karic 16 outside the yellow line. Tima's the man on the ground who tries to clear it out to Tommy Tanner. Fernandez also on. This is Karich and Marinero. Karich with the ball midfield against Kelly. Tried to get it long, but Henderson was there to knock it away from Marinero. Good job by Harrisburg to really get back on defense. Fernandez oh. slides and bicycles it to midfield, and Kelly fouls Karich. Great defensive effort on the part of Fernandez to clear that off the yellow line, because if one of those speedy Harrisburg players is able to knife through, Again, it puts the pressure on Ottawa for the goalkeeper, but now Harris, or Cleveland rather, has the ball. Uh-oh. A bad break, but Malia saves it. The ball bounced off referee Terry Campbell and could have ended the game, oh. but Malia saved it. That would have been an assist to the referee because Chinapu did what he had to do to clear it out. He thought, and instead it goes off the referee and gives Zoran Karic, a guy who doesn't need second chances, a second chance. Look at Chinapu, goes right to the referee. Back to live action, Alavi has it taken away by Bob Lilly for Harrisburg. He tries to come to midfield, Alavi gets it back. Nope, Lilly holds his ground. First goal wins. Can you tell? Look at the way they're playing. Kelly will get there in front of Thomas. Thomas fights with him, pulls him down. It's Harrisburg's ball. You know what also needs to be pointed out at this point? You see Danny Kelly getting up. These guys are in physical pain, but at this point, they also have to be mentally tired. It is tough to play at this intensity. DeChandret has Fernandez knock him off the ball. DeChandret won't quit, though. Now he gets right back into the thick of things. Great camera shot of just showing how DeChandret gets right back into it. Betcher. Blocked in front. Fernandez will clear it out. No one's sitting down here in Cleveland. We've played two and a half minutes of overtime. Cleveland scores. They go to the NPSL Finals. You and I are pacing up here. We're about to jerk on the ties. The Chandret for Harrisburg. Harrisburg hurries. They get a four-on-three numbers advantage now. Chinapu to Betcher. Marinero comes in as the fourth defender. Chinapu won't get a shot away. He squares and faces Medved. Look at that defense by Marinero on Chinapu. Marinero started his career as a defender. He's right there on Chinapu. Chinapu shot blocked by Marinero. Your MVP, your big gun playing defense. Now he'll come the other way. Henderson knocks the ball down back in his own third. That's a violation, but much better than oh. the option of letting it go through. Well, it sets up a set piece, but otherwise if it goes through, it maybe goes to Hector Marinero, and it's good night for Harrisburg. Well, Scott Henderson did what he had to do. Get the over and back violation. Once uh, you advance a pass your yellow line, you can't put it back over. Huh. Kansas City, they're not going to get out of it easy. St. Louis is coming right back. It's a one-goal game. That's anybody's game at the Kemper Arena. I bet you some people in Kansas City are starting to stand up. They're standing up all over the NPSL tonight. Too much tension. Carriage kicked out by Malia. The ultimate one-goal game here. One goal ends it. Marinero knocked it out of play. Harrisburg's ball at midfield. And, you know, it's impossible to predict who's going to get that one goal. You see Zoran Karic, the approach on the free kick. And that's a rocket. And Malia in traffic, that's a tough save. You talk about having to focus. Look at this. He knows it's coming. He's got to clear traffic to himself. 
I mean, this is the kind of pressure goalies face in indoor soccer. They've got to clear 180-pound bodies out of the way. And once they do that, what do they get to do? Save a shot that's coming 70 miles an hour. It's a great job. John Abe rolls it back to Panzetta. Miller in the corner. He's had quite a game. He wins it for the Heat. Miller wins it for the Heat. They'll be in game three Wednesday night. Perhaps appropriate. We talked about him. Bad knee and all. He's got that speed, an electrifying player, and there will be a game three. Much to this may of that man, Gary Henley, because he knows game three means another opportunity for a team that is starting to try on Cinderella slippers. Doug Miller, you look at this, he gets around George Fernandez and puts it in the net. What a night for Doug Miller. Three goals and two assists. The game winner in overtime. Miller. We talk about unlikely heroes. Miller is the winner, and there's the tongue salute again to the Cleveland fans. He won't be the most popular guy in Ohio right now. Doug Miller plays an unbelievable game for the Harrisburg Heat. And keep in mind, as banged up as Harrisburg has been, Miller goes off with the knee injury. We don't know if we'll see him back. They don't have any players to send out there. Miller says, just tape me up. They did. And he went out and scores the game-winning goal. Nothing short of brilliant. Harrisburg wins in overtime. The series is tied 1-1. We'll be back. 1-1. One, one. But to start dusting your car even sooner, call this number now. Have your credit card ready. Operators are standing by. Our final score. Harrisburg 20, Cleveland 18 in overtime. Let's go downstairs to the victorious locker room and Dave Johnson. We can't, we can't hear Jim Pollahan right now. We're having some audio problems in the locker room. What an unbelievable finish for Harrisburg. Harrisburg, after losing at home to Cleveland, is the series over. They fall behind here. It looks like it again. They win. They will force a deciding game three Wednesday night here in Cleveland. The winner advances to meet the winner of the Kansas City-St. Louis series. Last score in Kansas City tonight. The home team barely in front by a score of 10 to 8. Forgive me if I get a little poetic about it. But to thine own self be true, Dennis Hamlet in Harrisburg, you have presented yourself well. What a game. And it's only going to get better next week as we will present the finals here on Sports Channel America. Kansas City, St. Louis, winner of that game tonight, will be on Sports Channel next Sunday night in the finals against the winner of Wednesday night's Harrisburg-Cleveland game. Please join us at 8 o'clock one week from tonight for Game 1 or Game 2 of the NPSL Championship Series. Doug Miller's third goal of the game. He also had two assists. He's the unlikely hero as he tucks the ball underneath the legs of Cleveland Sato Orff. Bad knee and all. Look at the heavy tape on his left one, knee. Two, you there? It's not slowing him down at all. We have Dave Johnson down in the Harrisburg locker room. All right, I'm with Harrisburg Heat head coach Jim Pollan. Jim, you just told me that your team has guts, but that may be the understatement of the season. Well, we didn't want to lose tonight, and uh, we had played a great fourth period and just put pressure and pressure and pressure and kept going at them. Uh, got the lead. They came back. We got the lead again. Uh, but the guys just showed a lot of determination, a lot of uh, relentless pressure. You're missing your top scorer, Franklin McIntosh. You're starting to run out of bodies during the game. We were worried you'd be able to field a basketball team. And the guy who scores the winning goal, he was playing hurt, Doug Miller. He hurt his, uh, hurt his knee with about two minutes to go in the game. But, uh, you know, he's a, he's a competitor. They all are. These guys battled for each other and uh, deserved the victory. We played hard, and we want to win it again on Wednesday. What about the situation Wednesday? Now you do have some breathing space after playing two games in two nights. How does that change your perspective from a health situation? Well, hopefully we can get some more guys fit. Uh, there are three guys didn't play tonight. Two of them said if we get to Wednesday, they're going to play no matter what. Uh, they're going to have to fight their way back into the team. These guys in the field tonight, ten of them did a great job. A guy named John Pro, a rookie, Angelo Panzetta, scoring machines. We didn't read that in the notes. Well, they've been working hard all year and getting their opportunities. Uh, now John Pro got an opportunity to start, and he showed me he may have been starting all season. 
But even with the other faces back on Wednesday, it seems to be the same situation. You really do play as a team. Yeah, we stick together uh, through thick and thin, and uh, I think that's where we get our success. Uh, everybody rises to the occasion, and Doug Miller rose tonight. John Pearl rose. They all rose. Richard Chinnapur was everywhere. On the bus ride over here, did you show the movie Rocky or any motivation schemes, or is it just all about teamwork? These guys are motivate themselves and, and as a group. Uh, you know, we lost last night a game that I thought we could have won, and uh, we came in here and we knew, knew we needed to win two. Well, we got one to win now. Well, you certainly made it exciting. Best of luck on Wednesday. Thanks, Dave. All right, that's Harrisburg Heat head coach uh, Jim Powell. I am back upstairs to you, Dave. Final score, Harrisburg 20, Cleveland 18 in overtime. Tonight's NPSL Game of the Week was produced and directed by George Veris. The commissioner of the NPSL is Steve Paxos. The director of operations, Paul Lohovsky. Technical facilities provided by Image Video. Tonight's telecast is an exclusive presentation of Veris Media Services. And so for Dave Johnson, I'm Dave Phillips saying good night from Cleveland. Our final score, 20-18 in overtime. Harrisburg wins. Join us next Sunday night at 8 o'clock when we continue to bring NPSL playoff action as we enter the finals between the American Division champion and the National Division champion in the best of five series. The NPSL on Sports Channel America is an exclusive presentation of Veris Media Services. Good night, everybody.